চলো আমরা লাইভে চলে গেছি কথা বলা শুরু করি ওকে আচ্ছা আসসালামু আলাইকুম এন্ড গুড ইভিনিং টু অল দ্য পার্টিসিপেন্টস দিস ইজ দ্য টাইম ফলোইং ঈদ উল আযহা হোপফুলি অল হ্যাভ enjoyed this Eid ul Adha a totally exceptional one but still we passed uh, an Eid ul Adha and following Eid ul Adha this is the first program of ECG study group today our speaker is respected professor Abdul Wadu Chaudhuri sir and I'd like to ask professor M. Athar Ali sir to say so- something about professor Abdul Wadu Chaudhuri and start the program sir Athar sir Uh, good evening everybody this is really a great occasion amader ei ecg study group er ei program er online program er ajke eta bodha fifth program but amar kache mone hocche today's program is somewhat exceptional ei rokom unique faculties er collection really ei jabot amader kono program hoyni ami really happy to introduce amader ei amara screen e jaderke dekhte pacchi amar mone hocche amader kauke introduce kore deya dorkar nei but amader অনেক পার্টিসিপেন্ট আছে যারা নতুন এবং তারা হচ্ছে রিয়েলি ভেরি মাচ নিউ ইন দিস ফিল্ড অফ দ্য কার্ডিওলজি তাদেরকে ইন্ট্রোডিউস করে দেওয়ার জন্য আমি বলি যে আমাদের স্ক্রিনে যাদেরকে দেখা যাচ্ছে তার ভিতরে সবার আগে আই এম হ্যাপি টু একনলেজ মাই প্রফেসর প্রফেসর সুফি আরহমান ম্যাডাম আমাদের স্ক্রিনে দেখা যাচ্ছেন আমাদের লিজেন্ডারি ইন্টারভেনশনাল কার্ডিওলজিস্ট বাংলাদেশ বাংলাদেশে ওনাকে সবাই চেনেন আর কি আমাদের ডিয়ার পার্টিসিপেন্ট প্রফেসর সুফি আরহমান আছেন এই জায়গাতে আছেন আমাদের প্রফেসর আব্দুল্লাহ সাফি মজুমদার স্যার যিনি আমাদের একই রকমের উনি লিজেন্ডারি উনিও বাংলাদেশের ওয়ান অফ দ্য গ্রেট টিচার আমাদের সুপ্রিয় রহমান ম্যাডামের মধ্যে গ্রেট টিচার আমাদের প্রফেসর আব্দুল আল সাফি মুজুমদার স্যার এবং ওই রকমই আর একজন টিচার এই মুহূর্তে আমি স্ক্রিনে দেখতে পাচ্ছি না আমাদের প্রফেসর নজরুল ইসলাম স্যার তিনিও আছেন এই জায়গাতে এবং আরও ইন্ট্রোডিউস করে দিই আমাদের এই দেশের ভিতর থেকে আছে যেমন আমাদের প্রফেসর আবু আজম সরি এম জি আজম সরি আজম এম জি আজম चिन्हा স্ক্রিনে দেখা যাচ্ছে ডক্টর প্রফেসর অরুণ মাসকি হি ইজ फ्रॉम নেপাল ডক্টর অরুণ মাসকি এই জায়গায় আছেন স্যার फ्रॉम নেপাল আর অরুণ মাসকি উনি আমাদের প্রফেসর রবি গামেদ স্যার তো যার কথা হয়তো বা তুমি অনেক শুনে থাকবে আমাদের এই জায়গাতে আরো আছেন আমাদের ডক্টর এ কে মরহুল ইসলাম যার কথা না বললেই না যে সে যেমনি একজন ট্যালেন্টেড যেমনি একজন একাডেমিক এবং যেমনি একজন মানে ক্লিনিক্যাল ক্লিনিক্যালি অল টাইপস এর মানে ট্যালেন্টেড একজন ফিজিশিয়ান আরো আছেন আমাদের প্রফেসর মাহবুবুর রহমান যিনি আমাদের মানে অত্যন্ত রিয়েলি তার কথা বলতেই হয় যে আমাদের প্রত্যেকটা একাডেমিক প্রোগ্রামে অ্যাক্টিভলি পার্টিসিপেট করে আমাদের প্রফেসর মাহবুব রহমান আর একজন আছে আমাদের প্রফেসর খালেকুজ জামান তো আমি নামগুলো বললাম হচ্ছে আমাদের যারা পার্টিসিপেন্ট আছে প্রায় নিয়ারলি 200 পার্সেন্ট ফেসবুক এবং এখানে দেখছেন তাদেরকে পরিচয় করে দেওয়ার জন্য আমাদের এই সমস্ত লিজেন্ডারি এই সমস্ত ফ্যাকাল্টিজের কালেকশন এরকম একটা স্ক্রিনে ভেরি মাস আনইজুয়াল আর আজকের প্রোগ্রামটা আমার মনে হয় যে এই কারণেই বেশি আনই হয়ে যায় যে আমাদের আজকে স্পিকার হচ্ছেন প্রফেসর আব্দুল ওয়াদু চৌধুরী আব্দুল ওয়াদ চৌধুরী সম্পর্কে একটু বলা লাগে আমাদের পার্টিসিপেন্টদের জন্য বলি যে আমাদের সমসাময়িককালে বাংলাদেশে রিয়েল টিচার রিয়েল एग्जामিনার সবার প্রিয় টিচার এবং উনি একজন আদর্শ টিচার যিনি অলরেডি প্রুভ করেছেন যে হি ইজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য গ্রেট টিচার অফ দিস কান্ট্রি সে হচ্ছেন আমাদের প্রফেসর আব্দুল ওয়াদ চৌধুরী এজ এ টিচার মানে প্রিয় টিচার শিক্ষক বলতে যা বোঝায় সেই হচ্ছেন প্রফেসর আব্দুল চৌধুরী এবং তার কোয়ালিটি হচ্ছে যে হি নোস হোয়াট টু টিচ এন্ড হাউ টু টিচ এন্ড হোয়েন ইন হুইচ ওয়ে হাউ টু টিচ this is the unique qualities of the professor abdul abdul chaudhuri tar jonno ajke amader difficult topics seta hocche issues of the ischemic heart disease eta na ki eshe khub pochondo kore amar majhe tar program ta amra kichu kon pore enjoy kora shuru korbo professor abdul abdul chaudhuri ar rofiq ahmed sir er kotha ta ami bolchi amar mone dear participant ke je amader maskane arek jon ache amader program er sir tin ta ongsho abdul chaudhuri pore kintu amader professor rofiq ahmed chaudhuri jeta hocche one of the attractive part of this program rofiq ahmed রবি গামে স্যার হচ্ছে আমাদের পরবর্তীতে ইসিজি দেখাবেন আর একদম শেষে গিয়ে আমাদের একটা ইসিজি অফ দা উইক একটা ইসিজি থাকে সেইটা আমরা নিয়ে ডিসকাস করব তো এই তিনটা অংশ মিলে হচ্ছে কিন্তু আমাদের মানে এই আজকের প্রোগ্রাম 
শুরুতে আমি প্রফেসর আব্দুল ওয়াদুদ চৌধুরীকে রিকোয়েস্ট করছি তার মানে টকটা শুরু করার জন্য প্রফেসর আব্দুল ওয়াদুদ চৌধুরী থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ প্রফেসর আতহার ভাই ফর ইয়োর ভেরি কাইন্ড ওয়ার্ডস লেডিস এন্ড জেন্টলমেন देयर आर सो मेनी ऑफ माय टीचर्स आर हियर आई एम रियली ग्रेटफुल ऑल टू ऑल ऑफ देम एंड अ लिटिल बिट अफ्रेड एज वेल टुडे माय टॉक इज अबाउट इस्कीमिक हार्ट what the ecg we can find in there i will try my best to make it a little bit palatable i am not sure whether i will be uh, that much effective or not but i will try and uh, there is a legendary professor there professor mutamdar professor nuzul islam professor for rafiq ahmed is there they will be helping me if i get stuck in some way now a little bit of history in 1842 an italian scientist carlo metiucci he realized that the electricity is electricity associated with heartbeat and in the late uh, 1895 william einthoven he is credited for the invention of it in 1924 he got the nobel prize for physiology or medicine for this his work on ecg his past articles on ecg appears in 19, uh, 1902 and 1903 look at this the old ecg machine so cumbersome and look at this the new ecg machine unfortunately for the corona epidemic we cannot see the beautiful faces of the faces of the uh, ecg tech nowadays but still let's go to the topic what do you mean by ischemic heart is the result of limited blood supply to the heart muscle in more than 95% of cases is due to limited blood flow resulting from a narrowed coronary artery so coronary heart disease and ischemic heart disease has become synonymous at the presentation we know about that and ecg is a chief diagnostic tool to identify ischemia injury and infarction and from the central ischemic zone to surrounding injured zone and the around the uh, central necrosis that's the infarction and the peripheral ischemic zone just getting some blood supply but not that results in different degree of ecg manifestation look at this ecg it's look quite normal isn't it but what do you mean by normal we know that the standardization is all right the it is the sinus rhythm fever is positive in lead 1 to 3 our wave progression is all right x is it normal but what about the ischemic point of view we can define a normal ecg from the ischemic point of view as that there is no significant q waves st segment at the isoelectric line normal q waves in all peripheries small q waves may be there which are less than 0.04 second and less than 25% of the corresponding qs complex it can be present in all leads except in v123 there we do not expect any q whatsoever a lead fr will usually get a qs complex q waves can be slightly invert in the right precordial leads in v1 v2 we are not talking about the juvenile ecgs in those cases uh, their presentation is separate and we are actually talking about adult patients but be aware of the normal ecg why normal resting ecg never excludes ischemic heart ischemia may be covered and it depends upon the supply demand balance there may be the narrowing which is not enough to produce any problem during rest but maybe a cause of great concern during exertion and number 2 ecg changes of mi take some time to develop like the enzyme changes it also takes some time and many of the ecg abnormalities are non specific in fact if a patient comes with chest pain around 50% have chest uh, ecg changes which are quite specific for ischemia but the rest are not and single ecg cannot give progress we need serial ecg this is very true of ischemic heart disease and then again they do not always correlate with angiogram mechanism 
And if there is paroxysmal event, then, say, then if we do ACT as a point of time, we may not get the event in that. What do we mean by ischemia? When there is a mismatch, it can be a reversible process before the permanent cell damage occurs. Ischemia precedes myocardial cell injury. Injury precedes myocardial cell death. That is necrosis or infarction. ECD manifestations can be manifested abnormalities of the ST segment or abnormalities of the T wave. These two are the most important thing. There may be abnormalities of the T wave or T virus and T virus T angle, but we will be concentrating on the ST segment and T wave. And when the ischemia is established as infarction, the T wave will be there. But we want to prevent have something happening that bad. The most familiar pattern of in city pattern of ischemia are the horizontal or down sloping ST segment depression of one millimeter more and or T wave infarction. Now, the ST segment is so important from the ischemic point of view. It's the segment that represents the cardiac cycle, the period between depolarization and repolarization. In normal state, ST segment should be isolated, that is relative to the PR segment or TP segment. But most ST segment elevation is a result of non AMI causes. We are so much afraid of an ST segment elevation, but we should not, uh, we should be aware of the fact the ST segment elevation not necessarily mean that the patient is having an acute ischemic problem. In a study, uh, 123 patients coming with chest pain and with the ST segment elevation of more than one millimeter. Well, only 50% have MI, the rest are not, but they do have some cardiac ECT changes due to LPP or LVH. So we should be aware of these facts. And what is the importance of this ST segment elevation? Why we are paying so much attention to this? Because it has important prognostic factors. There's a correlation between the number of ECG leads that shows the ST deviation and the extent and severity of coronary artery disease. If the ST segment depression occurs in many leads, in eight or more leads, in many, uh, many uh, arterial territories with ST elevation in AVR and V1, the chances are that the patient have critical left vein coronary artery disease or equivalent severe triple vessel disease. So there is important. So whenever we're talking about ST segment, we have to sure how and when we are measuring it. We should measure the ST segment 80 milliseconds. That's two small square away from the J point. And what's the J point? It's a junction between end of QRS, beginning of the ST segment. Now, this need a reference point. What is the reference point? We should compare it to the TP segment or PR segment. Better to compare with the TP segment. Now, there has been some grading system for ischemia. The Starfus keep being bound. They, in the 1980s, they devised this. And shortly after occlusion of a coronary artery, the serial ECT changes that we can see, they have graded it in three, grade one ischemia, the initial part, the T waves become tall, symmetrical, picked, but without ST segment elevation. Therein lies the problem. If you are aware of this fact that this is a harbinger of something very sinister happening very quickly, you should be taking prompt action. But if you think, oh, well, there is some change, is it hyperkalemia, is it something else, is the person lean and thin, something like that, will miss the train. We can abort an MI if we act in this stage, hyperacute T waves. The grade two, there's ST segment elevation in at least two adjacent leads without distortion of the terminal portion of QS. I will show you what we mean by that. The grade three, there is changes in the terminal portion of the QS complex. Now look at this uh, panels. The upper panel show a RS configuration of ECG. And look at this. In the hyperacute stage, in the upper panel, the T wave is becoming, the first one is normal. 
The second one, T web is becoming tall, peaked, and quite based. And what do we mean tall? More than 50% of the corresponding R wave. Then look at the second stage, ST segment start elevating. And but the S portion, the terminal T wave portion is still quite normal. The last one, upper pendulum. Now look at this, the S wave is getting obliterated. The R wave height is getting smaller and the ST segment getting up. It is a full blown ST elevated MI. Now, if the patient has QR complex, look at this. There will be change like the similarly, grade one, grade two, grade three ischemia, and the changes what we see in here. AHA has defined uh, the ST segment depression, the segment to which we pay so much attention. There are many types of depression. There may be junctional depression, there may be downsloping depression, or horizontal depression. Which one is important? Now look at this. If there is a junctional depression, that means J point is depressed, then ST segment is rapidly upsloping. There is 60 to 70% chance is due to ischemia, but 30 to 40% chance is not at all due to ischemia. Simple running, walking, having a sinus tachycardia can produce this. This is of no harm, but it may be associated with ischemia if the clinical scenario suggests that. The second is horizontal depression. This is very important. Look at this, very low error rate. If you get this horizontal ST depression, you can be sure this is ischemia unless proved otherwise. If there is other factor that I can consider some drugs or some uh, electrolyte changes or other things, then I can say, well, this is very rarely, they may not be due to ischemia. What about downsloping ST depression? It is also important. There's slight chance of five to 10% chance is not due to ischemia, but more 90 to 95% chance it is due to ischemia. There are a huge lot of causes due to ST depression. Look at this, unstable angina, or reciprocal changes, digoxin effect, equity MI, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as this lecture will be in the YouTube, and the students particularly, they can go through these things at their own pace, at their own time. We'll be concentrating more on the outline and the discussion. Now, what about elevation? The ST segment elevation expresses transmural microdial ischemia. So it denotes more severe form of ischemia. Can it be transient? Yes. Transient or reversible ST segment elevation occurring at rest is frequently observed in prismatal angina, where coronary vessel spasm is the culprit. What about ATT? During ATT, if there is ST segment elevation, it reflects there is critical narrowing of coronary arteries. But there is a caveat, provided there is no key wave of a previous MI. Why is that? If a key wave is present in the baseline ECG and during exercise test, you are getting ST elevation on that particular area, that may not reflect new ischemia, that actually reflect discognitive wall motion abnormality. The ventricular wall is thin or scarred in there. And that ST elevation, more representative of actually aneurysmal changes. But in a patient who do not have any QR, any ST segment elevation during exercise is very, very important. But when we come to first start paying attention to ST segment elevation in MI, back in 1920, Party, Dr. Party, Professor Party, he actually first uh, observed this thing. But you know, until the 1950s, we were not paying much attention, not using that information too much. Now, present guidelines suggest the ST segment elevation, the level of ST segment elevation should be matched with age 
sex and the ECD lead. Why? Now look at this. There's a lot of words, but it's very important to remember. New ST elevation at the J point in two contiguous leads, at least in two contiguous leads, with a cutoff point of more than 0.1 millivolt. That means one small square. That is significant ST elevation. That is critical ST elevation. But except the V2 V2 V3 level. In those two layers, the cutoff point are not one small, small square, two small square. And, but in men 40 years old and above, in those cases, two small square in V2, V3, anterior layers. But if the patient is younger, then it should be more than 2.5 millivolts. But what happened to women? In case of women, the muscle mass is less, the changes are smaller. That's why if there is any ST elevation, more than one and a half small square, 0.15 millivolt, 150 millivolt, 0.15 millivolt, that is critical, that is important. Now, what is this, this Minnesota code? We are using the modern ECD machines, which are using computer technology. There are a lot of algorithms in there. And from studies, they have uh, devised this Minnesota code. This Minnesota code requires that more than or equal to one millimeter stimulation in one or more leads, one, two, three, AVL, AVL, V5, V6, or more than or equal to two millimeter stimulation in V1 to V4. If that is present, the ECG diagnosis will be acute termite or consider acute termite. This is Minnesota code, and this is incorporated in almost all the machines. They are also using other algorithms to improve the sensitivity and specificity of the diagnosis. Now, why this ST7 elevation occurs? I'm getting a lot of theories in here because I think it's so important. The heart is something in a, uh, uh, a few bits, you can be a person who is alive or not. So we should have a little bit more understanding of what is happening. Now, as the cell become hypoxic, potassium ATP chain is open. Local areas of hyperkalemia develop, causing injury currents to flow between them and the normal microbiome. That produces the ST elevation on ECG. But where? The manifest segment factor is, is it is, uh, factor is direct to the surface of injury. So we will get the ST elevation overlying the leads uh, where the injury is there. The leads that present over the injured area will show the ST elevation. What about the ST depression? The leads opposite to that, more than 90 degree or beyond, will show some degree of ST depression. This ST elevation is called reactive change and that the opposite away change is called reciprocal change. There are a lot of causes. We know this. We'll be talking about it later on. Now, let's go into the main topic. What about the coronary heart disease presentation? It could be asymptomatic. It could be chronic. Uh, stable angina, we now call it chronic uh, uh, syndrome, coronary syndrome. It could be acute coronary syndrome. That means unstable angina or MI, both ST and non-ST elevated MI. It can be heart failure or death. Asymptomatic? Yes. A patient can be totally asymptomatic. The ECD can show some changes. The patient may have critical stenosis. Still, there may not be at all any symptom. Again, many diabetic patients, uncontrolled diabetic patients, may not have any pain as a result of neuropathy. The other extreme is sudden death. Very unfortunate. 25% patient of acute MI may present, this may be the sudden death, may be the presentation. And look at this, 20% of the patient of MI will die before reaching hospital. And most of these deaths are caused by ventricular fibrillation. But the usual presentation we get is angina. There is a mismatch between the oxygen supply and demand because the blood flow is limited due to nerving of the artery. And why the pain is there? 
anaerobic metabolism, lactic acid buildup, and other things. So angina when you call it can be stable or pinch metal variant or unstable angina. The stable angina, same level of activity produces the symptom. And that's why uh, it's mostly called exertion angina. It can be produced by physical activity or emotional excitement or increased cardiac overload. And classically, it is relieved by rest of nitrate. The problem is 50% of these patients have normal finding in a resting ECG. What should we look for in this patient's ECG? We should look for prior MI, evidence of prior MI, evidence of interventricular conduction delay or varying degree of AV block or different degree of arrhythmia or STTUF changes. And in these cases, ETT is the initial procedure of choice. This is a classical example of symmetrical TFO inversion that we see in a case of stable angina. What about prismental angina? This is a variant angina. This occurs not at exhaustion, but at rest. And due to coronary spasm, not due to fixed block, there may be some degree of fixed nerving, but that's usually minor. Superimposed on that, there will be coronary spasm. Usually, uh, it occurs with at the same time of day, may wake up the patient from the sleep, and very unpredictable. Now look at the upper panel. During pain, there is ST elevation in lead two and three. Two minutes later, no pain. Is the ST segment is going down. And is the ST segment can be very high? Yes, it can be very, very dramatically high. And if we got the chance of doing an echo in there, we may see on that territory, the artery that's involved in the spasm of prismatal angina, that uh, the wall motion may be totally attenuated. And after a few minutes, when the pain is gone, the wall machine started coming back to normal. That's very surprising. And that medication is a different. We know that. What about unstable angina? It's a part of the non STSS, isn't it? Prolonged angina pain at rest or new onset angina, or that's at least plus two or three CCS classification. The patient who has very stable angina now becoming uh, unstable now becoming uh, precipitated by much less exercise or having new symptoms or is not relieved by the usual medication. All these are unstable angina. These patients require early intervention. What could be happen? During the pain, we can get different degree of changes, but mostly ST depression or and or t wave inversion. What about non ST elevated MI? Almost similar like unstable angina. The difference is there is already some cell injury. There is raised cardiac injury. But there is no ST elevation in ECG. Remember, this is in MI. This is not only ST elevated MI, we pay much more attention. But non ST elevation MI is very important. Do you know why? Because if you consider these patients, Acutely, the mortality rate, death rate is higher with ST elevated MI. But if you consider one month, six month death rate, the patient with non ST elevated MI often have higher mortality. Because sometimes we think that these patients have lesser degree of coronary artery disease, which is not correct. And the ECD changes, there can be a flattening or some degree of depression or deep inversion. All these changes can be there. And the evolving changes can be there. What can be evolving changes? There may be downward ST segment depression, which is common. There may be upward ST segment elevation, uncommon. Symmetrical TF inversion, very common, or can be a combination of all this. Look at this ECG. There's only very minor change. Look at one AVL five, six, slight ST depression. But the patient have chest pain, the troponin is raised. So this is the case of non-ST lifted MI, infralateral wall involvement. Or the patient can show 
dramatic changes like deep T inversion. This we used to call subendocardial MI. Now it is we call it non ST elevated MI. Why this ST elevation and non ST elevation are separated? Because of the treatment approach. We have seen by studies have shown that in ST elevated MI, if you use the thrombolysis, it gives mortality benefit, it's beneficial. But in non ST MI, if you give thrombolysis, you are in trouble. The mortality rate may be increased. But what about the intervention? In both these cases, ST elevated or non ST elevated, intervention is of course preferable. And, and that gives the better result. Now comes the third part, ST elevated MI. That's the third part of the acute coronary syndrome. We know, look at this panel from left to right before infarction. The second panel show the starting of the hyperacute T wave and ST elevation started. Then gradually it's going up and gradually there is formation of a Q wave. The T wave, the coronary T wave, that become inverted. And after many months, let's say when the star is healed, at least 12 weeks, six to 12 weeks, you get an upright T wave. This has become an old MI. There is a key wave which suggests you, you have had a transmural infarction. Now look at this ECG. Look at V1, V2, V3. This ST elevation may be benign, may be malignant. How can I be sure? The clinical context. Chest pain is there. The chest pain nature suggests is, MI is happening. This type of ST elevation is there. Please, please go for intervention or thrombolysis. Do not wait for the typical ST changes. Now look at this one. There is hyperacute T wave again in the V1 to V2 to V4 segment. If you start treating this patient at this level, within one to three hours of onset of chest pain, thrombolysis is very useful. But after three hours, is the PCI just give better result. After nine to 12 hours, even thrombolysis is not of only of marginal benefit. Now, acute migratory infarction we have to understand that ST segment elevation occurs if persistent complete occlusion of an artery supplying a significant area of myocardium without adequate collateral circulation. This is important. We may find some patient who have apparently normal ECG, but when we do the angiogram, we see one artery may be totally blocked, but it's getting a lot of collaterals. And this has happened over many years. So there has not been much cellular infarction or injury, but the level of capacity of work is reduced. The patient will become symptomatic on exertion. What about uh, unstable and non stmi It results from non-occlusive thrombus or a small area of involvement, subendocrine involvement, or a very brief occlusion, or an occlusion with an educated collaterals. You will get the chest pain with or without the enzyme changes, but the ECG will not show the ST elevation and there may not be any QA. We should remember that the ST elevation due to AMI usually demonstrate a regional pattern because of the arterial supply that's involved. If it's anterior MI, the changes is likely to be in V3, V4. The septal MI, V2, V3, we usually get from V2 to V4, that means central septum. Eh? That may be the one may be involved depending upon how uh, proximal the block is. There may be lateral MI where the diagonals, diagonals are involved. There may be inferior MI because of the right corner involvement or sometimes the circumflex involvement. But if there is diffuse ST elevation, these are usually due to non AMI causes like pericarditis. So localization is important in AMI. And how do we localize? 
An important determinant of the site of coronary artery occlusion is the direction of vector of ST segment deviation. Where the ST segment is elevated, that territory is injured. The injury factor is always oriented toward the injured area. So, ST segment elevation of the injured area and reciprocal ST depletion the opposite field. This slide, we are using T word. Indicative ST segment changes, reciprocal ST segment changes. Indicative means this is the elevation overlies the injured area. Reciprocal means opposite to the area, there may be ST depression. There are the changes. The deviation is opposite. There will be depression. What about a septal anterior easily? The reciprocal changes are posterior. We do not record posterior ECD, so you won't get any changes. What about lateral? Look at 1 APL 5 6. And now the heart is like this. Lateral wall is here. And if the lateral wall, the upper lateral wall is involved, the inferior list 3 FEA is opposite to that. There may be some changes, reciprocal changes in there. In anterolateral one, similarly, some changes in there. What about inferior wall involvement? Look at this. The inferior wall is involved. Now, the injury current is here. So there will be a still division in two, three FEF. But the one FEF, they may show the changes, the ST depression. P2, P3, because the reciprocal change can be seen if it is beyond the axis kind, injury kind axis beyond 90 degree. There may be some changes in there, ST depression in there. In posterior, indicated change is not there. We only see the reciprocal changes, mirror changes. That's what we see. Lateral means lead one and five, six or seven, inferior to three FEF anterior and septal V1 to V4. The central septal MI, isn't it? Beautiful ST elevation in V1 to V4, up to V5. We can also call it uh, anterior if there is extension of up to six. Anterolateral, the involvement is four, five, six, one AVL, or could be inferior. Now, we divide into two groups. I have done that. We inferior MI family of QF MIs, which are inferior, inferior posterior, true posterior, right ventricular MI, sometimes posterior lateral MI. Look at this one. Lead two, three, FEF. Beautiful ST segment elevation. But look at one and FEL. There is ST depression. So this is reciprocal change. Indicative change as the elevation in loop 2, 3 FEF. The Q wave will appear in 2, 3 FEF. And usually the Q wave becomes largest in lead 3. Next largest in lead FEF is smallest in lead 2. I tell my students, look at this heart. It's lying obliquely yeah, like this. Now, right corner is going like this. And lead 3 is like this. So the greatest chain is the right corner is involved. You will see in the lead three. Now look at this old MI. The Q wave, smallish one in lead two, a bigish one in lead three, a medium sized Q in lead FEF. As we have told, the largest Q in lead three, the next largest we expect in lead FEF, the smallest in lead two. Remember something. You may get in Q wave, that may be quite uh, big. Why? In lead three alone, but that does not mean the patient have MI. You have to have changes, ST segment change or Q wave presence, anything in at least two contiguous leads to consider that it's pathological, it's related to MI. What about acute posterior MI? There is let us consider lead 2, 3 FEF. There's slight elevation in lead 3. FEF is going up, but one millimeter is not yet. I cannot call it significant. So it does not 
correspond to the diagnosis of acute MI because the two contiguous lead is not showing the required amount of ST elevation. But what about V1, V2, V3? There is ST depression. This is classical of two posterior MI. And we should remember that this is one case where there is no ST elevation, but patient is eligible for thrombolysis. We should be paying much more attention to this. And always, always, if the pain is suggestive of MI, pay a little more attention to the ECG. Are we missing something? Now look at this one. The upper two panel is the 12 plate ECG. Lead two, three, FEF show small Q wave. Q wave inversion in three FEF very prominent, flattened in lead two. But look at P1, P2. The R wave are a bigish. The R wave not supposed to be that big in V2. And the T wave, they are too good. P1, P2 is not supposed to show beautiful T waves. They are supposed to show smallish, insignificant T waves. T waves should be beautiful in mid to lateral leads. But here it is present. What could it be? Because there is an old inferior mind, we have done the posterior leads. Now look at this, V7, V8, V9. There are T waves. So this means the patient has old inferior posterior mind. Why this is important? Because it means the patient has much higher muscle damage than only in inferior MI. The area of damage is wider. And which artery is involved in inferior MI? For the interventionist, for the primary PCI. Before you go into the cath lab, just we have a look at the ECG and try to determine which artery is involved in anterior MI, in inferior MI, and where could be the lesion. Now, in inferior MI, there could be RC is the most important artery. Circumference could be there. But remember, a type 4 LED means an LED that goes beyond the apex and supplying part of the epic inferior wall of the LV. And the type 4 LED may be responsible. We can see an ST elevation in V456, 45. 4, 5, 6, and also in 2, 3, here. Is there LAT and RC involved? No. It's LAT type 4, a big artery. And we see the V1, V2, V3, the spare. That means the upper part of LAT is quite all right. The lesion is in mid to distal LAT. The LAT is wrapped around the apex and thus produces changes in both in the anterolateral leads and also in the inferior wall. Now, which artery should you consider? If you have ST supine elevation more than one millimeter in inferior leads, we say this is MI. Well, we should try to consider which artery. ST secondary elevation in lead three more than lead two, it RC. The reciprocal change would be more in this case. But if the elevation is more in lead two, now consider this, the heart is like this. RC is going down there, lead three is there, and so the changes very likely we get because the vector lies over there, the ST elevation more in lead three. But if it is a circumflex that goes behind the heart, then supplies the inferior wall, it's more aligned to the lead two. The ST elevation will be more in lead two. And the reciprocal change because of the current of injury is going that way, will not be that much in one APL. But lateral one involvement may be there. We should look at one APL 5, 6, there may be ST elevation, not reciprocal change depression. And we should also have a look at the LAT type 4. If there is ST elevation, both anterior leads and inferior leads, it's not two artery involvement, it's single artery involvement. Now, how can it be sure it's proximal or distal RCA? Proximal artery involvement, much more area is damaged. Distal artery involvement, there may be small, only PDA is involved. So how can you have a look at it? If there is ST-sec pain, 
isoelectric or elevated in case of a inferior amine. But we find that the ST7 is depressed in V2V3P4. The reciprocal change suspect the RV infarction because the patient have very proximal RC occlusion. So R before the RV branch, so RV is involved here. How can I confirm that? By the right side digestive, V3 and V4. What about Kushturiamai? Usually it's caused by LCS occlusion, but it can be seen in dominant RC occlusion. And how can we be sure that the ST segment elevation is the posterior chest P7 through 9. And where are those? P7 in the same line of 5, 6, but in the posterior axillary line, that's P7. In the mid scapular line, P8, paraspinal line, that P9. And what are the changes? There's horizontal ST depression, there are reciprocal changes in P1 to P3. There are tall, broad R waves and dominant upright T waves, particularly in V2. Now look at this. V1 on the right side of the midline, V2 on the left side of the midline. And V2 overlays the right atrium is upper part, ventricle is the lower part. So V2 overlies the over the right ventricle, the posterior wall directly behind there. The changes will be much more prominent in V2. If there is a tall R, the R is greater than S in V2. In a case of inferior MI, consider that its posterior extension is there. If there is no ST elevation in inferior wall, but still there is ST depression in V2, uh, uh, V1 to V3 with a tall R in V2, consider that it could be true posterior MI. We really miss those things. Look at this one. There is ST elevation in lead 2, 3 FEF. Now look at this. The elevation is look two is much more than the lead 3. So there must be some complex involvement. Now look at the anterior leads, P1, P2, P3. The P2 shows a very beautiful T wave. Oh my, is there extension? Yes, of course. Horizontal ST depression. Look at this. If you Consider this like this if the anterior MI, interceptal MI, the ST elevation occurs in V1, V2, V3. If you just opposite it, mirror image, then you get this picture. Posterior one picture will show as depression in here. And the patient has also lateral wall involvement, which also suggests that P5, P6, 1, all these are showing ST elevation. That means this is the Look at this. This is a dominant circumflex circulation, and there is extensive damage to the lateral, posterior, and also inferior surface. We can confirm that by the posterior legs, P7, 8, 9. Typical ST elevation is there. How do we do that? Like the QFL TCG, detach the four, five, six legs from their usual place after doing a triple DCG in this case, then attach those things on the back seven, eight, nine position. Record again. Here, look at this V1, V2, V3 showing the changes that we have seen the previous ECG and seven, eight, nine showing the changes that are present in the posterior surface. This is a classical acute posterior MI with lateral line involvement with some inferior wall involvement and dominant circumflex circulation. Now look at this one. These changes should be managed as an ST elevated MI. So we should go for thrombolysis. If primary PC in the top, that's better. If not, we should use thrombolytics in here, even though there is not ST elevation. One caveat is there in those age more than 40 years, one millimeter or more ST7 elevation should be taken as a critical point. Otherwise, 0.5 millimeter in youngish patient, 0.5 millimeter ST elevation or in females, half a small style ST elevation in V789 is important, enough for diagnosing posterior infarction. And 
the recommendation is that KC guidelines, we should do the posterior or RV leads in any case of inferior MI. What about the RV infarction? There's another member of the inferior MI group. RV infarction result from occlusion of the proximal RC. How do I identify it? ST elevation in P1 in association with inferior wall MI. ST elevation and how much elevation? More than one millimeter or more in P4R with an upright T. It's the most sensitive sign of RV infarction. Occasionally, QSF QR may be there. P3R can be used. We have, will show you which one is more sensitive. Sometimes, in case of RV infarction, we get ST elevation in P2, P3. This resembles anterior MI. But inferior wall, frank inferior wall MI with ST elevation V1 to V2, V3 actually is suggestive, maybe suggestive of RV infarction. This ST segment elevation V4R, can it help us predicting which artery is involved? Yes, it can. Look at the first one. Proximal RC occlusion, there will be ST elevation, there will be positive T wave. Distal RC occlusion, there will not be any ST elevation. There is no, and positive P wave is still be there. But if it is due to circumflex, if the circumflex is too big, there will be a depression in there. And right side list, which one we should pay more attention? Look at V3R, right sided V3. Sensitivity around 70%, but very specific. But V4R is both sensitive and very specific, very good. We should use it. In case of all inferior MI, we should use a right-sided lead, at least a V4R. Can we look at the V1, the changes in there? It can suggest. It's very specific. ST segment, isoelectric or elevated in V1, when the V2 and V3 show ST depression in a background of acute inferior MI, suggest the RV infection is there. But you need to do the right side lead to be sure of that. Enough about inferior MI. Let's go to the anterior MI. Anteroceptal MI, we can get a QS, Q, or QS complex in lead P1 to P3. The ST changes, as we have shown, ST elevation, T inversion, ST gradually getting flattening out, T gradually getting up. These are the changes we'll get. Anterolateral MI, Similar changes, look at this one. Q in one, FEL, and look at four, five, six. There's narrow Q in there, but the remarkable thing is that the R wave heights are not there. It should have been there. That suggests there's, there is anterior letter volume. Now look at the T wave. The T waves are upright. That means there is already healing. The patient has all anterolateral MI, but the rate is high a little bit, isn't it? This suggests the patient is having some LV dysfunction, maybe. It is important to localize the lesion, isn't it? We have so, seen that in RCA. What about uh, LAT territory, left sided territory? Septal one supplies the basal interventricular septum, including the bundle branches. So any anterior MI showing bundle branch block, new bundle branch block, that means the lesion is very proximal before the first septum. We should remember that diagonal supplies the high lateral one of the heart, a region of the heart, which are represented by the lead one and F here. Let's go there. Occlusion proximal to S1. There will be ST elevation in F here. Why? Because the septum is here, the degree of current in injury current is going like this, and right 90 degree ankle and is uh, FVR. There will be ST elevation in there. 
but in V1, it will be more than 2 millimeters. There may be RPVB and there may be a depression in V5. If it's only due to occlusion to proximal to D1, there will be Q wave in lead one if here. If D1 is spared, there will not be Q wave in there. ST depression will be more if the lateral wall is involved. Then we can get the reciprocal changes because that's opposite to the vector of the injury current. What about extensive enter wall MI? Occlusion above D1 and S1. We will get a steel emission in all the leads. V1 to V4, V5, V6, maybe there, one AVL is, yes, there'll be a steel emission in AVR sometimes. And there'll be depression in 2, 3 AVR because the lateral wall, one AVL is involved. And the ST elevation will be more in FL. The reciprocal change more will be three. Look at this. FL is here. If it is showing the more ST elevation, certainly, of course, the lead three should show should be showing the more ST depression. Now look at this one. Occlusion before S1 here. There is bundle branch block better. If the patient had a previous ECG that do not show any RPPB pattern, this is definitely a case of lesion where the lesion is very proximal in the LED before the first septal. What about this one? Lead one and FVL shows the ST elevation. Remember, these are limb leaves. So one millimeter ST elevation is significant. In the chest leads, is two millimeter or sometimes the 2.5 millimeter. In the lateral wall leads, is again one millimeter is sufficient. Now, this is involved the diagonal alone may be involved in there, which supplies the high lateral wall region. And to apical, if there is a wrap up LED that will get a steel emission both in the anterior leads, in V3, V6, and also in inferior wall. It does not mean two artery involvement. It does mean a very biggish LED involvement, which supplies all the apex and beyond in the inferior wall. So that's the changes we can get in this type of LED. What about left vein disease? We are so afraid of it, isn't it? Because the left system supplies more than 70% of the blood supply of the heart, including the bundle branches, including the papillary muscle responsible, the pillar who maintains the integrity of the mitral valve. So if left pain is involved, we are a goner. We are in deep trouble. How can we identify that? The presence of ST depression one millimeter in eight or more surface legs in part of lateral ST depression, coupled with ST elevation in AVR and V1. Look at this. Left main is like this, involved here. The whole territory is deprived of supply. Then the injury kind is going that way. So the other way, the V1 right near 90 degree angle and AVR directly away from it. That should show what? Depression. Why? Depression will be in here because we are having disease in here. It's going down. And elevation in there, the other way around. ST segment elevation in lead FVR more than V1 in these cases. Why spread ST segment depression or anterior ST elevation can be there? We'll show the ECG. And you know, this is very important. Look at this one. ST depression in lead one, also in two and FEF, also in ST depression in FVL, and here V3 to V6, ST depression is there. Why it is spread? The territory involved is both LAT territory and also the RCA territory. How is that possible? Look at FER. There is ST elevation. So that means it's as a left main involvement. Now, what about this one? Same, 
एस्टिक डिप्रेशन वेरी प्रोनाउंस्ड इन वन एपीएल टू थ्री एपीएल आपके यहाँ शेजार मुझसे कार्यशील बहुत बंदोबस्त हुआ है कूना उसके बुझने को ना हमारे जो बोल दिया प्लीज वो नॉर्मल हो रहा है कैन आई स्टार्ट कैन आई स्टार्ट हेलो हेलो यस यस यू कैन स्टार्ट स्प्रेड and there is also look at this one st lipshan anterior valve there is both st lipshan and white space the st depression this is a case of severe left vein disease or severe triple vessel disease now these are the patients sometimes the particular the previous one we sometimes when we get this ecg the choice of treatment is of course primary pci if we do not get that we should be using thrombolysis look at this there is no st elevation still thrombolysis can actually save a patient's life and this is obvious st elevation and wide spread st depression such in very severe triple vessel disease or left vein disease now this is the curiosity atrial ischemia why curiosity we do not pay much attention to it but for academic purpose we should have some idea what do we talk about pr segment elevation or depression in patients with mi indicate concomitant atrial ischemia or infarction we do not pay much attention to the pr segment unless it is prolonged well in case of acute mi setting if we are interested we should have a look at the pr segment and Atrial involvement is widespread. In up to ten percent with STMI, it can be present. Ten percent, not less, and mostly right atria could be by atria. Very uncommonly, uh, left atria. Liu et al. produces some uh, diagnostic criteria. You can go through it later on. The main thing is look at the B and C. the pr segment either elevated or depressed compared with the tp segment look at this one the arrows are there the pr segment is depressed beyond the tp segment and the patient has acute inferior my st elevated in 2 3 avf so there is atrial infarction look at this one there is pr segment depression the second panel the b shows the classical change so if you pay attention to these things we can identify and what does this signify actually they signify that the lesion is very proximal uh, uh, artery is involved so the atrial branch appears from the very early part of the artery corresponding artery isn't it and also another evidence of atrial infarction is the atrial fibrillation sometimes we see that with acute mi and that suggest the atria is also infarcted now we enough about st segment now what about the q wave q wave traditionally considered a sign of myocardial necrosis but we think that the dead all the tissue are gone not necessary Q wave that appear within six hours from onset of symptom may not re signify irreversible damage. So prompt thrombolytic therapy or PCI may uh, uh, elevate the uh, appearance of the Q wave. It could be transient, but if it is present, it in means large ischemic journal involved. You know. we usually talk is to talk about transmural ischemia and mural ischemia mural infarction and subventricular infarction but mri particularly mri has shown that many patient with q wave mi 
actually do not have throw and throw transpural infarction. And many patients with transpural infarction do not have show any Q wave. In general, if the Q wave is there, larger area of myocardium is involved. It is said the at least 17% of the myocardial mass, LV mass, it should be involved before the appearance of a Q wave is there. So any Q wave, the damage is more. But it may not be permanent. Look at this one. This is the case, uh, a female patient. The Q wave, interceptor lemma, Q wave is there, already developed. Look at this one. The LAD is totally occluded of the S1 and D1. Now after PCI, a beautiful flow, both S1 and D1 are open and also the rest of the blood flow are there. And after two months, uh, let's look at the uh, V1, V2, V3. Small R has appeared in V2, V3. Remember, in inferior MI, with revascularization, in 25% cases, Q will disappear with a spontaneous or therapeutic revascularization. In case of anterior MI, around 12% cases, Q will disappear. And that depends mostly upon the degree of collaterals that is present that allows viable myocardium to be present there. Viable islands of tissue is there. So after Thera uh, therapeutic or spontaneous revascularization that some tissue are already dead, the R wave height will not be as before, but the rest of the tissue gradually get well enough, active, and the R wave comes back. Now, there are some STMI equivalents we need to know about. Why? Because we miss them, and they need aggressive treatment because they are equivalent to ST elevated MI for which we are paying so much attention. One is Wellens syndrome. He's a very famous cardiologist. And if I'm not wrong, probably he has died in this corona pandemic. One of the uh, notion name in case of uh, electrocardiography field. We see a pattern of deeply inverted or biphasic T wave in anterior leads, V2 to V3. And this is very specific for critical stenosis in proximal LAD or left main coronary. Reinhardt, in 2002, first uh, established a diagnostic criteria for Wellens syndrome. Deeply inverted or biphasic T wave, isoelectric or minimally elevated ST segment, not more, not more than less than one millimeter. No precordial Q wave, preserved precordial R wave progression. There is recent history of angina. The ECG pattern is present and persistent in pain free state, but the biomarkers are slightly elevated. There are two types type A, biphasic, initial positive, terminal negative in 25% cases, type B, deeply and symmetrically inverted T wave. Look at this one. The T wave is inverted V2, V3, up to V4, V1 to V4. If you look at this one, biphasic and the type B, deeply inverted. This is shows the classical biphasic T wave wellness syndrome. Look at V1, V2, and V3, also V4, anterior leads. The R wave is somewhat present gradually, and this is persistent. This is the type A wellness. This again, deeply symmetrical T wave inversion, type B wellness. We call it sub and we used to call it only subendocardial MI. But subendocardial MI is where? Is the only a distal part or a small branch is involved? No. This is proximal LAD critical lesion. And if we do not identify it properly, look at this ECG V1, V2, V3, there is biphasic T wave, minimal ST elevation, R wave is still there. It was not treated properly, and that has resulted in a ST elevated full blown MI. If we could have treated it earlier on, we could have avoided a Q wave MI. The muscle mass would have been uh, survived, some muscle mass. The second ST elevated MI equivalent is D winter T wave. 
that was also present with our obvious ST segment elevation. And that also, in only in 2008, very re uh, recent, the key diagnostic feature uh, will show the ECG, and you should remember the ECG. That's a very unique type of ECG that will be uh, fixed in your mind. And this is seen in 2% of a LED, uh, LED operation. Why this is important? The same thing. If we do not identify it, we do under treat the patient. Look at this. This is the typical deep winter TVA. There will be no absence, uh, absence of ST elevation and precordial lead. Every there will be ST elevation. And there is junctional depression and upsloping ST segment. Look at this one. This is the classical ECG. If you remember this ECG, whenever you get this ECG, you will be electrified to start treating the patient acutely because the patient is having an MI and that patient needs thrombolysis or revascularization by primary PCI, whichever is possible and feasible, particularly in this corona pandemic era. Now, that's a conundrum. The left bundle not block. The ECG based on ECG is already abnormal. How can you diagnose MI in there? In this ECG, we see that there is the QS complex in the lead, it is positive that T wave should be uh, ST depression and T wave should be opposite to that. If the QS complex is negative, the T wave should be upright. That's the appropriate discordance that should be present in usual LBBB. Now, if the patient have a previous ECG which does not have any LBBB, now he has chest pain and LBBB, the diagnosis is obvious, straightforward, this is acute MI, treat it, revascularize it, either by thrombolysis or by primary PCA. But if the patient has previously documented LBBP, what are you going to do? We are going to use Galbosa criteria. At a Galbosa now, I'm going to take a look at the What about LBBP in a patient? Now patient have LB dysfunction. Now we know that for LB dysfunction with LBBP, we consider uh, CRT treatment. Now, if the patient have DCM and LBBP due to that, the cardiac resuccinization therapy, biventricular pacing will be very beneficial for the patient. But if it is due to MI, the patient may not benefit that much. How can you identify it even without doing echo, without giving patient any hope, false hope, that we can do something for him, that the patient is actually had a big anterior MI. We can use the Chapman sign or Carvera sign. Diagnosis of old MI in presence of left bundle branch block. Very simple. Any notch in the upstruct of the R wave in the LBBP suggests that this LBBP is related to anterior MI. As simple as that. Now, what is Carpenter's sign? Again, very simple. Any notch in the ascending limb of the wide S wave that is present in the anterior leads, if it is there, it is due to this uh, hortus in the pathway is suggestive of there is MI. The patient has anterior MI. So, before telling that, we can do something really great for you by giving a uh, 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 look at this uh, CRT, we can say that, well, you have LBBP, you have LB dysfunction, we may do good, some, do some good by putting a CRT. It's very expensive, but we have to be sure that it's going to work well for you. You may not end up as a uh, non-responder. In the infected MR, uh, uh, LB, a CRT may not be that good. And what about acute MI? Elena B. Carbosa. In 1996, she diagnosed infarction with LBP with three criteria. Concordant ST elevation. That means in LBBP, in the list that have a positive QRS, you have a ST elevation. We have said that 
in the with LBVP, if we have positive QRS, the ST segment T wave is opposite. But in this case, if you have no ST segment is also elevated, this is MI. Or concordant ST depression. In the leads in LBVP, anterior leads has negative QRS complex. And the ST segment T wave is upright. But if you are having ST segment depression, concordant ST depression, that's also suggested that you have primary STTF changes. This is MI. Or excessively discordant ST elevation. Okay? Now, this is very specific. If you have the score is 5, 3, and 2, a total score of more than 3 has a specificity of 90% for diagnosing MI. But it's not that sensitive. So you have to resort to clinical examination and echo and also biomarkers to be sure sometimes. This is what happens in the usual LPP, QRS and ST segment is opposite. QRS negative, ST up, QRS positive, ST down. In case of Garbosa criteria, QRS up, ST up, this is MI. QRS down, ST down, this is MI. Or too much ST elevation. That also suggests you are having a mind. And now they look at this LBP or paste is on. RP pacing produces ST elevation, a, a left bundle mark block pattern. So this criteria is also applicable for that. This is an example. Look at this white complex in lead one, and also V5, V6, you are getting ST elevation. This is Garbosa criteria, concordant ST elevation, this is acute MI. Now this one, a little bit tricky. Left bundle bath block pattern, one AVL, and also five, six, four, five, six, showing the wide uh, uh, R wave. But look at AVF. QRS complex positive, ST segment one millimeter up. Concordant ST elevation, even in one lead, is diagnosing of acute MI in presence of LBBB because it satisfies the Garbosa criteria. The guidelines suggest is in the ventricular paste rhythm, we can use the same formula, but they are, of course, less specific. Look at this ECG. There is, after P wave, there's a spike before the QRS complexes in each complex. There is ST elevation, concordant ST elevation in one FVL5. So this is PACE ECG with positive Garbusa criteria. The patient has MI. If we know how to look for it, we can diagnose it. What about RPPB? It's not a problem. We can diagnose it quite well. Ischemia diagnosis may be difficult, but infarction diagnosis is not difficult. Look at this one. Look at V1. There is complete right bundle branch block. Now, look at this one. The ST segment started elevating V2, V3. So, this is acute ST elevated MI in presence of previous RBBP. We can diagnose it. Now, look at this one complete right bundle branch block. Now the next one, there is a still lesion in inferior leads. We have diagnosed the anterior MI, we have diagnosed the inferior MI. So RBBB do not hamper the diagnosis of MI. What about old MI? Look at this one, deep wide S wave in lead one, suggesting right bundle branch block. Let's go to V1. V1, V2, V3 showing RBBB pattern, but there's a Q wave in there. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V up to V4, V5. This is anterior MI. What about the inferior leaves? There is also Q wave in there. Two, three, FEF, the Q wave is there. So there's both anterior and inferior MI. Both are old because the, look at the T wave. The TF has become stabilized, suggesting this is old. 
Uh, there are some mimickers, many mimickers are there. It's a long, so I'll go a little bit short. Early repolarization is important. If we do not identify it, we may misdiagnose it. With just slight chest pain, we can diagnose it as they're having acute MI. Previously, we used to tell the ST elevation, the first top panel, the first one, that's the classical early repolarization. But nowadays, also the bottom uh, two complexes in the upper panel, the slur ST segment or a notch in there also suggest early repolarization. Look at the corresponding ECG, we are seeing it. In the next ECG, look at lead two, three avia. We are seeing ST elevation, classical early repolarization. And that's J point del evolution with the ST segment concave upwards. Look at V5, there is a beautiful notch in there. Look at V6, there's a slur distal part. All pattern of early repolarization is present in a single ECG. And this is suggestive of this patient has early repolarization, not MI. That's another mimicker of ischemia, LV with strain. And we have to be, we, this type of tall R in lateral leaf that fulfills the criteria of LVH with ST depression, T inversion, is such a LV with strain. We can be sure the patient has ischemia. The patient may also present with deep inverted T wave particularly in a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there's gross LVH, and this produces this type of ECG. How can you be sure? The initial upsloping of the elevated ST segment is frequently concave in the LVH, but it's more likely flat or convex in case of SES. We call it coved ST segment elevation, isn't it? The T wave is yes, usually asymmetric in LVH, as opposed to the symmetrical T wave we see in coronary ischemia. Look at this one, asymmetrical T wave in lateral leaves. Look at this one, deep inverted T waves, and LVH is there. What about RVH? This patient, look at lead one. Negative T astopolis is there. Is it due to right ventricular hypertrophy or right axis? Uh, deficient due to love posterior hemoglobin. Look at lead two. There is P pulmonary. So there must be something wrong with RV. Let's go to V1. Tall R is there. It's narrow. And a small beginning key is there. Almost keyword pattern. And the P wave initial part is very sharp. Suggesting this is the case of right atrial and right ventricular hypertrophy. And the look at the T wave changes. Now consider this. RP, RP is wrapping up around the LV. When the RP hypertrophy occurs, there is some clockwise rotation. The RP gets the upper hand. There is relative ischemia in the RV. There is the ECG changes that, that are present that goes from V1 to V5 or V4. There will be T inversion or ST depression. Normally, we can get it in only V1, maybe V2. But in this case, because of the clockwise rotation, you are getting that. It does not mean there is anterior ischemia. It does mean we have to assess the patient in other ways. If it's a youngish patient, obviously, this is due to RV hypertrophy alone. Now, that's pericarditis. Why this pedestal elevation? not limited to a regional supply area. With, look at this, PR segment elevation in AVR. This is a lead, we do not pay much attention, but in many cases, it's very important for pericarditis diagnosis, for left main involvement diagnosis. This AVR is important. So, and that's the most specific sign of diagnosing pericarditis. But the first thing is that the ST elevation that we see is widespread. 
it does not limits to a specific vascular territory. It doesn't correspond to MI because MI is a vascular phenomena. It's a regional phenomena. And how do we differentiate it? ST elevation in pericarditis is called cave. In MI, it's convex or flat. ST elevation is diffuse. In MI, it's territorial. PR depression is the hallmark of pericarditis. Q wave is the hallmark of MI. And another very key point is that the T inversion that can happen in pericarditis comes late in stage four, when the stage, already the stage segment has normalized. But in case of acute MI, the ST elevation and T wave changes both become simultaneously, they coexist. That's a great important differentiating point. What about HCM? We have already mentioned there will be there may be deep T wave changes that that depicts ischemia. Maybe it's real ischemia, maybe it's relative ischemia, and it can also mimic MI. The Q waves will be there. How can you be sure? Usually, there's a LPH uh, criteria is there. Also, these Q waves are usually very sharp and narrow. What about LP aneurysm? This presents another problem. The Q wave is already there. Now, this ST elevation, is it reinfarction? Is it acute MI the patient is having chest pain? Is it actually the Q wave already has settled? The acute MI process is already going on, it's seven days or three days old. That's why we have a established Q wave, something like that. Or is it LP aneurysm? The ischemia is somewhere else. How can you be sure? Factors favoring the LP ventricular aneurysm is it identical to PPS CCD if it's available? Absence of dynamic ST segment change. There is no reciprocal change. Well formed Q waves. If it's acute STMI, there will be dynamic change, reciprocal ST depression, new ST change if you can compare with PPS CCD, and of course the clinical context ongoing ischemic chest pain. What about this one? We are almost near the end. Hyperkalemia, we know. It produces the classical changes, including the uh, ST elevation. But uh, I do think almost anybody can pay attention to the picking of the TUS and identify this is the hyperkalemia. This is more advanced stage. This patient has at least a calcium level of, in acute case, it's more than seven, in chronic case, uh, more than six. In chronic case, it could be more than eight. Hypercalcemia, because of the shortening of the QT interval, may produce ST uh, elevation in the anterior leads, but that's very rarely seen. This is more important. And Brugada, I think, everybody can identify it. We should produce a memory uh, template for diagnosing this. If you have a still elevation in V1, V2, V3, like this shape, it's like the Brugada. We should be careful. We should be taking the family history, should be asking about the patient has syncopot not, uh, and should be uh, advising him regarding ICD. WPW, you know, this is important. Sometimes patients are referred to us for angiogram and find that the patient did not have actually MI. This has, this has, the patient has uh, WPW. And look at this one. You can have a Q web that suggests the patient have MI, two, three FF, but the PR interval is too short. And if you look carefully, you will see the delta wave in many leads. And this is the beautiful ECG. This patient has intermittent WPW. Now look at the STT wave changes. Look at lead one. Second, third, first and second, the whole complex are quite all right. Then we have five bits of uh, WPW, uh, a pre excitation ECG. And look at the ECG changes, dramatic ECG changes there. 
and you are getting two, three FEF showing MI, but it's not MI. And again, it's getting normalized. In the same ECG, you get what Brugada can produce and what actually is not there. So that's a beautiful ECG. It's a mimicker of MI. Technical extracardia, when it's, it creates a lot of uh, anxiety among many patients, and you can dramatically cure the patient of the ailment by doing an ECG properly and showing that you do not have any MI at all. Look at this one, lead one AVL. There is Q web, Q is complex. And somebody has said, you have MI, now you do need to go uh, angiogram. Now, when you do the proper ECG, you find that the ECG is normal, the patient do not need anything. Look at this one. This patient has a dramatic presentation. Do you know why? There is uh, ECG changes in one APL, but look at the anterior list. There's also early depolarization. Somebody was advising the patient, you have serious problem. You have to go to the hospital right now. You are having an MI. The patient had both technical dextrocardia as well as the early depolarization syndrome has been pushed into, panicked into, uh, thinking that he has a critical coronary artery disease, he doesn't. He has a normal heart. That's very reassuring. We have to know it, identify it, and keep uh, assurance to the patient. This is important. Poor apart of progression in COPD creates some problems. Should we call it MI or should we not? Because the COPD patient is usually result from smoking, and that's a very important key factor for ischemic heart disease development, what about that? Well, we can alleviate that problem. By how? Do the ECG again, but now put all the leads one, uh, one space down. That means V1, V2, not in fourth intellectual space, but in fifth space, and the rest, four, five, six, V1, V2 in fourth space, and the rest in the, instead of fifth, in the sixth space, one step down, you will get the R wave. If you get the R wave, it's actually the heart is tubular, it's lowered down, you are getting that. The R wave would not have appeared if it had, the patient had MI. The presence of R wave in this, that ECG will exclude, can reassure the patient instantaneously. Pacing ECG can mimic MI. Well, this patient has a big spike and everybody almost, uh, all medicine specialists also very easily can diagnose that uh, is pacing ECG and the MI diagnosis is not there. But if the spikes are small, bipolar leads, you get LBPP pattern and sometimes they're considered either as LBP or as MI. What about this one? The patient is by pacing. That also shows, look at this, some ischemic pattern, which may not be there actually. So that's the end. What I want to say is that the ability of an isolated ECG recording to detect ischemia and infarction depends upon the pre-test probability of a patient having coronary artery disease. You do not pay attention that much to a 20-year-old girl coming to you with a specific pinpoint chest pain and T wave infarction V1, V3. But you pay attention to a 60-year-old man coming to with you with chest pain, a little bit atypical, but ST T infarction in V1 to V3. The clinical context is very important. ECG must be correlated with clinical history and physical examination. And remember, it's always useful to compare the present ECG with the previous one. Certain characteristics of the ECG change may aid in the correct diagnosis. ST segment a 2 morphology, distribution of changes, ST QS complex changes, voltage factors, etc. But ultimately, the most effective way of developing expertise in ECG interpretation is to see plenty of ECG and at the same time be aware of its limitations. I should also say 
we should be aware of our own limitations. Today, I will be asking forgiveness from the audience, learning audience, if I make any mistake. Because when I'm reading and going through so many books and articles, I see that I do not know so much things. So many things are there to be learned. Let us, uh, God give us the chance to learn a little bit more during this corona pandemic. And thank you all for patience here. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you again for your nice elaborative presentation. Uh, there are some questions uh, that has been there in question and session. I'd like to request uh, our dear panelists to open their video and also unmute their uh, speaker so that they can contribute to answering their questions. The first question that comes to uh, screen is that, is there any way to know that an ST depression is, is not due to ischemia? Atar, sir. Now, it is our money. Our poor body. Our poor body. Our money. We have to do this. Like that. This is. Because our very few. Comi. Question. Because very few. 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 Actually, I was hoping somebody will be asking this. I didn't put any uh, 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 example in there. In SPT, there is ST depression. And it's been told most of the time, this is not related to any actual ischemia. And the changes may remain for some time, even after conversion to sinus rhythm. The memory of uh, alternate pathway, the abnormal way the heart was reacting. I think Professor Rafiksar will be explaining why it is there. Mosin and Professor Rafiksar and you yourself, you three are better suited to answer that question. I mean, ST depression after tachycardia is not uncommon, but it should not last for too long. Yes. But then also, if you look at, we do troponin on patients who present with SVT, and sometimes you will find that troponin is elevated, a very marginal elevation. And when you do catheterization on those patients, you don't find any obstructive disease. I think these people probably has small vessel disease. And this happens in patients who are in 45, 50 year age range. SVT, there is some ST depression immediately afterwards and elevated troponin. Uh, so our other issue would be that when the heart is tachycardic, there can be some subendocardial ischemia. So there is no precise explanation. But on the other hand, the memory will apply to scenario where there is white cure as tachycardia. Yes. It's like somebody being paced in the ventricle and you stop pacing, you will see STT changes. That's due to memory. Thank you. Sir, but uh, there is a question. And if it is due to the rate related subindicodal ischemia, yeah. but there is some, in case of the AVRT, it is more common than the AVNRT. All the rate is almost similar. Is there any explanation, sir? I mean, if it is narrow QRS tachycardia, it should not make any difference at all. But it can be that if somebody has WPW syndrome and manifest pre-excitation, you can see ST segmentation. That's due to memory because in WPW syndrome with pre-excitation, the activation is like pacing or like ventricular tachycardia. So there will be some memory and you'll see more ST depression during the tachycardia with narrow QRS as opposed to AVNRT. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone can comment? Mozumdar, sir, do you want to add something, sir? Actually, <laughs> nothing to add, actually. The thing is that I I just echo the words of Dr. Rafiq Bhai. The, the, the explanation is it will be valuable because it, it may be due to the, some ischemia that is the, for the microvascular ischemia or maybe to the related, 
But think of the exercise exercise test, where we increase the heart rate and there is a depression, and we then label it as ischemic heart disease. So when the SVT, there is a depression and it is due to the rate related. Is it not the ischemia? It, it is only due to the uh, some other things. Uh, actually, sir, uh, that's the point Professor was saying. If the age is suggested, the clinical context is much more important. In a hypertensive yes. diabetic patient, if the patient has uh, a no, 45 no. plus. If there is ST depression and the increased heart rate, yeah. as, as you compare with the exercise test, exactly. or the exactly. uh, pharmacological or physical exercise test, exactly. then it means that it is ischemia. My God, sir, but, sir, but that is that relates to sinus tachycardia. Yeah. That's the most important thing. If but, it is to SVT or other thing, that same rule do not apply. But sir, what is told by the Rofik sir and what is told uh, written in the text is sir, it is rate related. Yes sir, it is ischemia, it is true. It is rate related ischemia. As because ischemia. during the rate, high rate, there was ST depression. The same patient, when there is sinus rhythm and the rate is normal, there is no ST depression. So that is a rate related can I, can ischemia. Can I comment something? Uh, yes, yes. No, sir. No, sir. Uh, Actually, uh, we must uh, see that whether this is a myocardial uh, injury or not. Sir, so video... one, one, one ischemia is, uh, one thing of ischemia is, is the demand supply ratio. The exercise ST chamber is a demand of in many cases. But if the patient's age is vulnerable, say for more than 50, where maybe there are atherosclerotic coronary artery disease, in that case, I think the troponin can play an important role to differentiate between the two. Uh, there may be a small rise of troponin in cases of diabetes infarction or ischemia, but if it is more, possibly <laughs> it has got an MI. So the difference should be there, whether it is a atherosclerotic coronary artery disease secondary, uh, which is ischemia is secondary to that, or it is a supply demand as well, like exercise. So this should be a As that Professor is. Mujumdar was saying that uh, there is a ST depression, and in most of the cases, in younger cases, that ST depression was the difference with the, uh, demand, uh, supply demand uh, discrepancy. That was not possibly, due, most of the cases was not possibly due to uh, uh, atherosclerotic diseases. But the possibility of atherosclerotic disease will be more if the ACE is higher, as uh, Dr. Rafiq was telling. That, that was that correct. Sir, I want to I want to have a answer, complimentary answer from uh, Shupiya Raman, Madam. Madam, sir, in your experience, uh, do you suggest angiogram in a patient with ST depression and the mild troponin raise in case of the SVT patient? That is mild increase of the troponin and the ST depression. Will you suggest the angiogram? Sorry, your theoretical question say again. Sir, madam. A patient of the a patient of the SBT having ST depression, gross ST depression, and mild elevation of the troponin. Uh, it is so a why about, you, no no why you will subject you have to find out why this patient is in SBT and SBT with ST depression is quite common, and also uh, the uh, mild level of ST high is there then a subsequent test you have to do and then subject the patient for the. Uh, angiogram, not rushing for the angiogram. Yeah. Okay, madam. Thank you, madam. Uh, uh, there is another Atta, question. Uh, Tushar, just 10 seconds. Uh, Atta, sir, if you can remember, there was a thesis done by Shahana under your, mm. uh, under your guidance. That was done in patients with SBT to determine the underlying atherosclerotic disease, significant uh, coronary artery stenosis. It was only 6% patients who are shown to have uh, coronary artery stenosis in this group of patients who have got SBT with ST depression, segment depression. Uh, that was the uh, information. What, what, what was the mean age? What was the mean age? What was the mean age, uh, 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 Around 30, around 30, around 30. 40. Yeah. So that, was, that was younger, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, next uh, two questions are like that. Uh, one question is, how can you differentiate uh, atrial infarction from acute pericarditis? As in both cases, there is segment depression. It is already discussed, I think. Uh, the thing in, is, uh, in in case of uh, acute uh, PR segment depression in associated with uh, oh. infarction, 
the infarction is limited to a specific vascular territory. You get the PR segment change in that territory only. But in case of pericarditis, the ST segment change associated with the QS complex is widespread, not limited to a vascular territory, as well as there is a, a PR elevation in FR. That's the difference. One is still regional, and there is local. And the next question is, sir, uh, how can we determine MI in the single patient who has got triple H abdominality already? Sorry? Is there any? What? WP, 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 manifest WP, WP patient developing yeah. MI. Is there any problem in diagnosing no, no, MI is in that patient? No, no. So, sir, those questions are already discussed not uh, as because there are two more sessions, time is short. So this yes, is sir. already discussed, okay. nicely described by the Professor Vadu. Okay, that, is, that is that is. I, I think we should go to Rafik sir's session. Yeah. We yeah, are yeah, actually all waiting for yes, time. Sir. Yes sir, we should, uh, rest of the things are almost discussed. Sir. So sir, we should uh, sir, no, before, move on to our next session. Uh, Tushar, sir, sir, before before concluding this session, our next session will be uh, Rupi Kamit sir's session. But before this, I have some questions from our student side for the open forum. Uh, first one is, the, sir, what is the term? That is, the is there any term, recent MI, old MI? Is there any term? These are questions in the examination frequent dust. Is there any term? What is called the recent MI? Extensive anterior MI. Recent MI. This no, term extensive anterior MI. Extensive or not extensive? That is not the question. But the recent MI is term is whether, whether any term like this, recent MI. Mozum Dar, sir? <laughs> sir, it is, no. uh, it is written in the question. <laughs> लेक्चारे in case of the acute coronary syndrome it is the repolarization part of the ecg is usually involved why not the depolarization part usually amar mone je khaligo zaman e question ta answer dik pore amra rofik sir er comment shunbo khaligo zaman acha it is well established that the repolarization part of the rest uh, uh, Depolarization part of the action potential is more affected in case of ischemia, and it shown that the QT interval is often prolonged before the development of the ST elevation. There is prolongation of the QT interval even before the uh, elevation of the ST. Uh, what's the reason behind that? Uh, because the repolarization part is basically is due to halting of the sodium channels as well as opening up uh, a slow entry of the calcium channel inside the cell and the outward diffusion of the potassium outside the cell so after the myocardial injury there is damage of the intra uh, cellular structure cellular structure so there will be diffuse diffusion of the potassium outside of the cell uh, from inside of the cell to the outside so the st segment it basically is produced by due to diffusion of the potassium ion from inside to outside of the cell and that is the stage 2 part of the repolarization that is why the st segment is more affected uh, in case of ischemia due to ischemic injury 
there is diffusion of the potassium outside of the cell and this diffusion of the potassium outside of the cell is mainly responsible for producing ST segment alteration in ischemia. So in ischemia, there is alteration of the ST segment with ischemia, not the depolarization part, which is going to help within a fraction of a second or less than fraction of a second, rapid entry into of the sodium into the cell and subsequently when it reaches the threshold, there is sudden opening of all the first channel. So sodium channel by blocking the sodium channels, there is uh, no question of producing any disturbance of the depolarization of the part. So repolarization is more effective due to ischemic injury of the cell. Yeah, yeah. This is the last question, I think. Like uh, Rubik's our final comment and then we will conclude this session. No, I think Thank I'm fine now. It was nice to see, uh, nice to see Professor Sufia, Madam. And Hello. Professor, Professor Maskey, is he still there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, um, Maskey. Maskey, please, please Un unmute and show your video, please. Unmute, I have Maskey. Some, yes. Yeah. Some Maskey. internet problem here. <laughs> Professor <laughs> Maskey, welcome yes, to this session. And I, I have I mean, some net been... problems. I'm not getting regularly. Okay. I mean. Welcome to the program. And uh, I mean, you, I have been talking to Atahar and Rodu for a long time. We are neighbors, uh, Bangladesh and Nepal. And I think we need to collaborate more. And I would hope that you will participate in this program and other programs in Bangladesh. Sure, we, we have, have lot to, <laughs> Yeah, we have a lot to learn from each other. And sure, we need to you, expand sir. this collaboration. Thank you. thank you for joining this session. Thank you, sir. Finally, Vadud Bhai, thank you very much for your excellent lecture. Sir, Amar Mana Rupi, sir, it's a shame. Sir, I covered almost all the aspects of ischemic heart disease, EC changes. So, we'll, we'll, as usual, we'll do some EKGs, and I would like uh, um, participants to answer, and we'll discuss, we'll make it short, because uh, we have been here for quite some time. And I have one suggestion for future that we keep the whole session within one and a half hour. So that uh -huh. uh, it will be great to do uh -huh. that. And if necessary, we'll split up our lectures. Um, this, this is CG. I just want a quick answer on this ECG. And to uh, uh, tell me. 30 seconds? What? Yes, sir. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. As, the, as the session is already quite extended. Yes. So. Uh, Answer is one is giving LBBB. Anything else? Sir, always demanding that we should go a systematic way. Yes, sir. It is. We are getting the ECG comments. Last 10 seconds. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and we should stop. Okay. So, what Sorry. is the majority diagnosis? Diagnosis or LBB? Majority diagnosis LBB. So one. LBB pattern is easy. Okay. So, the heart rate is 103. Um, and one and one and normal, mentioned, sir. Around one so hundred. Yes, left sir. bundle bunch back, normal PR interval. So it's typical left bundle bunch block. Yes. And so it, it brings me to the next ECG. Um, how about this one? Yeah. You go ahead. Okay. Uh, there is time change in the ECG morphology. These are not same patient. It's a different patient. Yeah. Yes. LBB with STMI. Exactly, sir. Yes. So anybody answering this one? LBB yeah. with ST elevation MI. Okay, good. So that's good. Good. I mean, if you look at lead one, 
you can see P wave QRS. But in lead V1, it's a little confusing because there are two sinus bits, and then of course there are there two is. premature bits. Yes, so that makes it a little confusing. But if you look at the native QRS, there is ST elevation in lead V2. It's about um, eight, uh, yes. close to eight millimeter ST elevation. And of course, in the lateral lead, in V5, there is um, ST elevation concordant. That fulfills the criteria of left bundle with acute MI. This is always a confusion. I mean, we always get ECGs of ST elevation, is it MI or not? Of course, please remember the clinical scenario is very important. If somebody came to the hospital with, with toe pain and has ECG left bundle, you are not going to search for acute MI. So this is the clinical scenario is very important in this case. So this is the criteria that Padud gave that ST elevation one millimeter more concordant with QRS, ST depression one millimeter more in discordant, V1, V2, V3, or ST elevation discordant. ST depression concordant and ST elevation discordant. That's important. This is five millimeter. And there is an, another criteria with a little bit less ST elevation. But if you do that, then you lose the sensitive uh, specificity. So five millimeter makes it very specific than um, less um, ST elevation. Previous ECG, am I permitted uh, to say something? Yeah, That's sure. Previous ECG. First one, when yeah. uh, we consider uh, a new onset LBB, uh, equivalent to ST elevation MI, new onset LBB. Why the question of Garbuza criteria in that case? If new patient having acute, acute severe acute chest pain and uh, LBB pattern ECG, uh, it's equivalent to uh, ST elevation MI. No, new onset Babito, LBB. in my lecture, I have said specifically, if you can compare with the previous ECG, this is the new onset LBB, you don't have to do anything. It's straightforward. It's acute MI. Yeah. But if you do not compare with the PPS CCG, you have to use the Garbosa criteria to diagnose acute MI in patients of health. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. What about the rhythm? Ravik, sir. Rhythm. What about the rhythm? I think let's leave the rhythm aside today. There is. <laughs> I think we should skip the rhythm part today. <laughs> Sir, sir, another criteria is ST elevation, 50% of the S wave. Is that a valid criteria, sir? What do you think? Which one? ST uh, elevation? In case, in case of discordant, 50%. Like V1, V2, mm -hmm. ST elevation, 50% of the S wave, preceding S wave. Is that a valid criteria, sir? It is not the original criteria. It is not the original criteria. It is not the original criteria. It is less specific. There is a term called oh, speed modification speed modification it has sensitivity barai, but specificity to come here how about this one any comment on this one uh, from the already, already some comments are coming okay. Okay. Already that diagnosis is quite nicely sir <laughs> okay. 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 डिप्रेशन <laughs> क्लिनिकल only for you just see the ECG criteria. Clinical scenario will help guide you. The like age of the age of the patient, or I don't have the age of this patient, but this was a really young person in the thirties with constant chest pain for more than twenty-four hours. Yes. 
Five weeks later, so you can see the ECG has gone back to what it used to be, uh, and I'm just going to add this criteria that Wadud has already discussed: ST elevation, PR depression, except in AVR and V1, and ST depression in AVR V1. These are the criteria, and you can use other criteria. But most important is the clinical scenario. I think the clinical scenario is very important because if we confuse with acute MI. And give heparin to this patient. That, that can be a major problem. So, um, if there is any doubt, it should be uh, clearly ru ruled out. Pericarditis is important to differentiate from acute myocardial infarction. How about this one? In V2, in V2, there is a ST elevation is convexity upwards. Sir. That may confuse. Exactly. You are right. <laughs> This, but this is the case of pericarditis. Yes, but that, that is your right, absolutely. It looks as if, if I showed this lead only, it would have shown up as an uh, acute MI, no question about it. The absence of reciprocal change, uh, is it a very good diagnostic criteria for pericarditis? Very good, very good diagnostic very good. point. But that depends upon which artery is showing ST elevation, because in some of the territories, you do not get reciprocal change. But if you get the reciprocal change, that means it goes It's, it's very specific, of, very specific. What am I? If you're considering the etiology, is it due to this pericarditis due to MI? No, you cannot say that. Because the STT elevation was limited to only V2. V1 ST depression, V3 uh, are not significant. Only single lead, V2 only. A single lead. Okay, but I think Professor Adam made a point. There is a question here. Because yes. Somebody can come with acute MI and then they can develop yeah. pericarditis with yes. diffuse ST elevation. Yes. And that is a very important clinical scenario that we need to rule out. And other thing is that we, I mean, sometimes these patients end up getting repeat catheterization to make sure there is no block blockage. But the pattern of the chest pain uh, will be something to give us clue that constant chest pain change with position. But even after that, you may end up Repeating cardiac catheterization makes sure that previously angioplastic vessel is still open. Yeah. Um, but this is an important, I think Professor Azam pointed out a very important issue. Um, I'm going to, these ECGs, I would like participants to answer um, and then tell me if they think this is myocardial infarction, which vessel is involved. Dear participant, answer, please. This is a little confusing ECG because there is PVC by Gemini. Please rem remember that. Um, that will uh, create a little problem in diagnosing, but there are clues in this ECG. This is a patient who presented to hospital with chest pain, 45 year old male. Uh, we are getting some answers, sir, already. So 30 seconds more for Discerning the ECG, sure. Because it's a bit confusing ECG. So, ten more seconds. I think, sir, we can stop that and okay. start discussing the case. 
majority of the participants going for entry mi involving led okay i think that's good answer it is very confusing because if, if i look at lid v3 minimalist television concave but in v4 you see it's becoming at what would describe hyper acute t wave hyper -acute. getting there so there is but it is a very confusing ecg um and let's look at the angiogram so this is the angiogram of this patient if you can see right coronary artery is a small right coronary artery but in the left the led is um, or, or subtotal oh, occlusion of the led so i'm going to have all this ecg the reason i'm showing it because i have corresponding angiogram and i think for the senior um, uh, cardiologists or the mid level cardi this is not an issue but i think for the young students it's important to understand that we are just not making up stories <laughs> so you all we will have to just so all this ecg so this is um, involvement of the led next oh. one this one <clears throat> We have 20 seconds for this. Yes. Sir, again, which vessel, sir? Uh, yes, ECG diagnosis plus which vessel? Ten seconds more. Five, four, three, two, one. I think so. We should stop and start discussing the ECD. So, what is the majority diagnosis? Anterior MI, anterior lateral MI. Yes. With uh, LED involvement, and one answer is the technical dextrocardia. Technical dextrocardia, one AVL. Tall okay. Here. Okay, good. I think good. At least one person, one person commented on the dextrocardia part. But if you look at lead one, the P wave is inverted. Yes, sir. So this is limb lead reversal. Yes. Plus an acute anterolateral myocardial infarction. So the, did they talk about the vessel? LED. Yes, they commented on LED, sir. Nothing more. LED. LED. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is the right coronary artery in the LAO view. There is some irregularity. Um, and nothing much. But if you look at the, this view, this is the LAO view for the younger doctors. And so the LAD will be coming towards me. And you can see there is a tight subtotal obstruction. And the second picture is after stent placement. You can see this vessel is open now. All right, sir, thank you. Sir, is a localization paper, sir. This is the ECG and this is the Again, ECG, sir. Can we get back to the ECG? That is LED proximal. Look at this one. The ST elevation, there is also minimal ST elevation in V1, but from V2 and thereafter, the ST elevation is there. So, heart septal may or may not be involved, but thereafter it's involved. But is the D1 involved or not? Because one AVL, we cannot be sure. We cannot be sure whether D1 is involved or not. The lesion is before or after that. Otherwise, we could have been able to do that. As a whole, diagnosis is correct. So I'll absence, go to the picture. Absence of ST depression in inferior lead indicates that it is uh, D1 is not involved. Uh, because of the technical estrocardia, you can comment on that. Exactly right. This is you cannot point. comment on that. The libris are invalid. So what, what what do you think of the lesion in that angiogram? Uh, sir, S1 is slightly involved. Hmm. Yeah. And that's okay. just very proximal. Sure. Okay. So next one. Still diagonal also involved. Diagonal is also involved. Okay. Sir, again, we give 20 seconds for the ECG. Sure. Sure. Yes. So we're not getting the answer. We are getting started getting the answer. Wow. I think people are more confident about uh, ischemia. They answer 
more accurately, isn't it? One of the comments yeah. while they're answering, I'll make that for the younger doctor that acute MI localizes the vessel. But if you do stress test, ST depression is not, that will not localize the vessel. So if you get ST depression in two, three AVF, it doesn't mean that RCA is involved. Um, so that's not very uh, specific, but ST elevation is actually very specific for localization of the vessel involved. And this is very, this is a very important message. ST elevation in lead two and uh, lead three and AVF, and also V two V three. So acute uh, inferior and anteroceptral MI with sinus tachycardia. Seems uh, Seems the point is, the point is, can you have, can you have both anteroceptral MI and inferior MI together? Acha, Amar Munay, Vadud Bhai, ita te, Amar Munay ji. It is a real actor, interesting ECG, both entry and inferior. Can, can I explain it? No, I'm going to say, Madam, I'm going to say, Madam, please. Yes. This is interesting, Madam. I'm going to say, acute inferior, I'm going to say, V1, V2, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, ECG diagnosis, what do you say? What do you say? Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, यह मुझे सार कॉम्प्लेक्स है लेफ्ट डोमिनेंट हॉर्ड चांस तक खूब बेशी और ये दिखे भी इनफीरियर तो बहुत है तो दूसरा होते वाले और तो बाल लेफ्ट सार कॉम्प्लेक्स हो गए डोमिनेंट मैंने एक तो दिए कि एक्सप्लेन करा जाए मेरा मैंने एक तो दिए जब वो इस डिफिकल्ट बट मामा करते जब मने होते हैं इनफिरियर लीड थ्री लीड टू Wrap around the lady. Lead three, lead three is more prominent than lead two, so it it can give a clue for right coronary artery. What did our participants think? <laughs> and number. Okay. Okay. Majority goes for right coronary artery. Our okay. Majority goes for right coronary artery. Another important change. Another important change. I want to add is PR segment depression. And yes. B and A B F suggesting of atrial infarction. Okay, so let, let's look at it. So this is the left side. I mean, one interesting part, if you look at the circumflex, there is something there, right? This way. But the main lesion was here. And as Wadud said, it's a pro I think that I don't know if the right atrial uh, vessel is involved, but it's probably after the right atrial vessel, right, Wadud? Yeah, yes. yeah. Sir, but the ST elevation in anterior leaves actually suggests the RB branches uh, is supplying the anterior wall quite nicely. Yeah. Possibly. And it may produce yeah. ST elevation in anterior leaves in a, a, in a setting of acute inferior mind and confusing us whether the RC or the uh, LAT is involved. Yeah. So and this is, go ahead. Now, what do I, I mean, Can I go back to the ECD, sir? Sir, I'm sir. Can I go back? Yeah. Achha. Now look at this. ST elevation in 2, 3 APF. The lead 3 is much more elevated than lead 2. So it's RC involved. Is it real? Look at AVL. The reciprocal yes. ST depression is, this is, the so it is This is This is actually an RC involvement, acute environment. Then what about the ST elevation V2, V3? This suggests the proximal RC is involved and that's why the RP branches may have been very prominent and they're supplying the anterior wall and the infarction, RP infarction actually produces this ST elevation in V2V3, but that ST elevation is not supposed to happen in V1. Uh, uh, that, mainly, uh, uh, sorry, sub, not supposed to happen in V5 or V4. And the ST elevation is uh, limited to up to V3. Sir, most of these criteria are for single artery lesion. Most is of the criteria are single artery. Is it applicable in multifacial disease? Like in this case, there is OM lesion, significant lesion in the OM, 
total occlusion in the RCA. Does this OM lesion is uh, making any change in the anterior leads? Yes. OM supplies the lateral wall. Lateral wall. Lateral wall. Then yeah. you should then you should look for one ABL and which is B5 B5 and B6. B5 and B6. Yeah, lateral lateral wall. Do. There is something. lateral wall. B6 should show some changes like ST depression, T inversion, which is there. Is chronic ischemia in there? But acute ischemia is a ST elevation. Exactly. So right, without, you, seeing, without seeing an angiogram, uh, final answer is right coronary artery. Yeah. First thing and, is, and, and actual yeah. infection suggest is very proximally involved. Now, what about the ST elevation in B3? Sir, that suggests the RV infection sometimes produces ST elevation in anterior wall, uh, uh, anterior leaves. Achha. Wadud bhai, I'm a complimentary question as a sir. I'm a prayak into roundish my pride dictum J LED, they can type for LED, she can enter my way. When a ST division in V2 to V6, then again two, three AVA. Ericum ST division. Sir, a catre terminology key hobby. I'm at the student track into private, sir, a patient record anterior and inferior my hisse. But basically, involved is one that is true. Sir, what, what should be the terminology? Can I camera both ECC terminology table was the acute anterior mean free my not camera entry my bullet otherwise explanation the book. I mean, can I say something? We do not yeah. say LED MI. We say we do not say RCM. We say yeah. anterior wall MI, MI. inferior wall MI. Yeah, but yeah. the wall are involved. So I should say anterior MI plus inferior wall MI. Because MI is wall related and vascular territory we differentiate which vessel is supplying that wall. Okay, let's I will ask a question to Professor Adud. Uh, let's say yeah. I'm the student sitting in an exam and I just say this is acute inferior wall myocardial infarction. Will you let me pass? I do not say anything else. I would ask that he should be giving a full answer, like acute ST elevated inferior MI. That yes, ST elevation is something I really want. No, I want to become a consultant cardiologist, and you are the gatekeeper to let me become the consultant cardiologist. I, 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 I will let him pass because the treatment is same. Treatment is Thank same. Thank you. What is important, I think the students need to understand that if I diagnose acute inferior myocardial infarction, I have saved the patient's life. Yes. Even if I miss some minor thing, those are more of academic importance than anything else. But if I miss acute inferior micro infarction, I cannot be a consultant cardiologist and I should not become. As That's long as I do that. And then, of course, we need to um, uh, go through the academic discussion also, all those discussions that we are doing. Um, and remember, please remember one thing that our idea, if you come back to us after five years, we may be talking about totally different thing except the acute inferior micro infarction. That will remain constant. All other discussion may change. So next one. How about this one? Again, patient with chest pain. This ECG was done in the field, and I think I have another ECG in the hospital. So this is the first ECG. Um, severe chest pain. Uh, I'll read the ECG. Um, it's heart rate 81, um, and then PR interval is normal, QRA duration normal. Answer, sir. To come. Started to come, and we we'll give 20 seconds for this ECG. Sure. And I'm going to go back. We can move back and forth. Uh, this is the second ECG. I think the first ECG is pretty good. Can we stick to the first ECG? That yes, be, uh, I'm, I'm sticking to the first ECG. So, Moment. 10 more seconds. Five, four. Sir, our money most of the I think we can start to uh, discussing the ECG, sir. Yes, sir. Our money is hard discuss for again. Our most of the participants into acute infrema, even right coronary artery will say. Our screening into motion motion silo. Asana, yes, sir. Yes, motion 
राइट कर Most of these students, I agree with them, sir. Sir, की ऐसे तो बेशी किसी जानते जाते कि हमारे रूपिक सर कैसे किस बुनी? पाने भी है लेकिन depression. Professor Odud. What is my? R C N बोलो. Okay. Anybody else? How about lead A V L A V R here? There is a still elevation. A still elevation. Right? Yes, sir. There is a still elevation lead A V R. I actually. What would first showed me one of this ECG in one of the session? I really didn't believe him, and I said I need to look it, and then I pulled up all these ECGs. So most answer is in frame. I showed that is ST depression elevation in three and a VF. Interestingly, there is not much ST elevation in lead two. But important. So this is reciprocal sensor, sir. One a VF. Okay, sure. So this is the ECG, right coronary artery. Um, totally occluded, so you are right. Um, and uh, so this is RCA, but there's the, uh, the there was minimal uh, ST elevation, but so that was not significant enough. How about this one? Sir, it is the angiogram of the previous patient, sir. No, this is different. This is ECG of a different patient. The angiogram of the previous patient was RCA. So yeah. everybody was right, and this is a first is the first one uh, totally occluded RCA, and the second one uh, that is uh, after stenting. So this is another ECG. Is it? Is it the new sir? It is new. This is new ECG. Yes. This is new. Sir, what is the question for this ECG, sir? Again, same question. Uh, what is the diagnosis, and if they think acute. If they think myocardial infarction, which vessel? I think sir, it is very very interesting for in the setting of intervention cardiology, sir. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm glad that I don't have to deal with this patient. I will not be very happy taking care <laughs> of it. <laughs> ST elevation uh, more in lead three than lead two, and uh, reciprocal change in one and AVL ST depression, and also ST uh, elevation uh, V5 and V6 V4 as right. well. That's uh, right. So uh, most likely uh, RCA involvement. And once you look at G1, this, look at look V1 at, V2. Yes. V1 V2 there is ST depression. Sir, before going to the main discussion, Professor Azam. Sir, ST elevation in V3, V4, V5, V6. How will you explain? V4, V5, V6. No, sir. V3 yes. started from V3 to V6. No, V4 and V2. Beyond V2, ST depression ST and V3 depression? to V6, V6, ST elevation. Yes, sir. Sir, yes. if we evaluate the first, we look at this two, three AVF. Three is more RC involvement. No doubt about this. Now in one and AVL ST depression, and V four five six is ST elevation. There are some sorts of reciprocal change as evident. There is involvement LED sorry RCA and L six involvement is it is what about the dominancy RCA and L six both vessels are involved in there. The which vessel is occluded? Like if 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 the if the patient undergoes the primary PCI. Who should be the yes. target vessel for you, L6 or RCA? Yes, in this scenario, we should we, uh, in the aim of primary PCI, I should go first to the RCA first. Just take a short. If it is total occlusion, then I go for another short to the left system. If it is L6 also disease, but I intervene from the RCA first. Can I, I think they are also first degree AD block, first degree AD block also. Can I want about the situation because lead two, lead three. If you look at this, there are the more elevation in lead three. This favor RC involvement and 
one AVL and B5, B6 also gives a clue for L6 involvement. But conduction defect has a fast degree hard work. Dominant L6 occlusion leading to superior MI, posterior MI, conduction disturbance. बोला जा फाइनल Let's go see. Let two, three FEF ST elevated. Three is much more than two, so it's RC involvement. Yeah. Now let's go to V1, V2. Isolated in V1, V2 STT pressure on RS ratio is going. Uh, it, uh, T wave is prominent, so there's RV involvement as well and posterior involvement. And if this is the lateral wall involvement is suggested, they should have have been. Uh, ST elevation only in V5 maximum six, not in these leaves. This can happen only if the RC is super dominant. If it's supplying yeah. across the apex, apex. also in the LED territory and the posterior lateral wall as well, only type then one, this can happen. Type one LED with dominant RC. Yeah, okay. it dominant is dominant RC. RC. Posterior okay. extension also no, no. present here. Thank you. Posterior extension. Right. Posterior extension. Yeah, for anything you want. So it is, so it is a term super RC. मोस्टिपेरिय Okay, so this is the right coronary artery, and clearly, I, you see the lateral is pretty big RCA. Uh, totally out of the total of course. Okay, and then and this is a, now look at this. Yes. Okay. So what do what do you think of this? Multiverse. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened? They did angioplasty of the RCA, and then send the patient for um, bypass surgery. Because there is, you see, there is almost sometimes. Sometimes we get a patient who has chronic occlusion of one artery. The dependent artery if get occluded, it produces change in both the artery territory. Yes, this has happened here. Yes, sir. This is sir. absolutely. And sir, after nice answer, I say, I am going to ask you to call Kotte Bari. Yeah, sure. Acha, Ribu. Yes, sir. Acha, Ribu, you me poppy bala ke bane video on karo to poppy bala. Poppy bala. छोटी <laughs> কিন্তু প্রক্সিমাল এলডি পরে আমরা যখন এটাকে ওপেন করলাম দেখি যেটা টাইপ 4 এলডি ছিল টোটাল একদম পুরো এই পর্যন্ত সাপ্লাই করতে আই আই লুকড এট অল দা পিকচার দিস ওয়াজ দা বেস্ট ভিউ দ্যাট আই কুড গেট স্যার স্যার ত্রিভু স্যার উনি এই শর্ট অফ ফিচার ক্যান হ্যাপেন উইথ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার ব্লক এন্ড এলডি ব্লক স্যার আমি স্যার আমি পপি বালাকে কল করছি কারণ পপি বালা এই অ্যানসারটা দিস ইজ দা অনলি এক্সসেপশনাল অ্যানসার ইন দিস মানে যারা পার্টিসিপেট করছে পপি বলছে ইট ইজ পসিবল ইট ইজ রাইট সাইডেড ডিসি যে হাউ স্যার এটা রাইট এটা স্যার রাইট সাইডেড বললাম আমরা যেহেতু জানি না স্যার সেই ক্ষেত্রে ভি4 ভি5 এই ক্ষেত্রে তো এসি এলিভেশন থাকতে পারে যদি এটা রাইট সাইডেড হয়ে থাকতো ডিস্ট্রিক্ট দেখতে হবে তাহলে ওকে অলরাইট আই উইল অ্যানসার দ্যাট কোশ্চেন জি স্যার If 
it is right sided ecg r wave if, if you look at the p wave yeah. it will not be positive in v5 v6, v6. Yes. the p wave will be inverted because right sided r v5 r the p wave is moving away from it in oh, lead yes. v1 it is biphasic and all the other lead is positive. So it, it is unlikely to be a right-sided lead. Thank you. Yes. Very Thank you, sir. But very, very nice differential diagnosis. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Thank All you, right. sir. Thank you. This is also an interesting discussion. Next next ECG, this one. Um, this is a patient, 83-year-old male with chest pain. Yes. Give him 30 more seconds to answer, and we're getting some answers. Still not getting, giving good answers. Apna class puru puri karak kaise lagse wajhe bhai? Na, orda niche rahi pare. Ek lar puri khay diye na. Shab gulo pere jaate. But that's what you should put in the exam. When we yes, teach sir. something, yeah. and we should ask them to questions they can answer and we expect them to answer. Right, sir. Uh, and if they if they do the baseline standard, they are good to be consultant cardiologist. Yes. yes. Ten more seconds. Then ten. I think we should get one participant. They have danced very nicely. Nepal, yes, sir, we should. Yes, somebody we from should, Nepal. Uh, Nepal. We should stop. Yes. Uh, sir, please request someone. Uh, uh, select, uh, Ribu, select a person. Can, can, can you call uh, Dr. Dhriti Dash? B A R I T A. Dhriti Dash. Can you call? Hey, yes, sir. So give me one minute, just. Hey, Atal Bhai. Hmm. After that, Mohila did very easy. She did it. I mean, while she is getting it, I mean, this is an interesting ECG. If somebody gave this ECG to me without describing any clinical scenario, lot of us may not even pay much attention to what's going on to this ECG. I think that's why uh, the clinical scenario of patient is so important that you somebody is having severe chest pain and an sir, ECG like that. Uh, sir, okay. a, is a te be, what history you should take this patient? What mandatory history you should take the patient? Can sure. I tell something I about this ECG? Can I tell? Uh, let's no, Govindo, Dr. Govindo, Dr. Govindo, you are not supposed okay. to tell no, no, you are the participant first answer. Later on, later on. No, no, no. Ribu, you have to get a Yes, sir. A patient has an interesting finding, sir. There are two letters mentioned as LM. Does it mean lip main? No, no, no. That's patient's name. No, no, no. Some of the participants are telling that the diagnosis is already written. No, no, no. That's not the code. This LM is not a lip main. Now, left main not uh, the diagnosis. Left main is the underlying cause, the etiology. Yes, this is maybe, a maybe not maybe. It is one of the important cause, yeah. maybe. No, no. In Achha, favor of re, left main, this is you have to you have to you have to formulate first sense. differential diagnosis. Yes, right. 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 Achha. 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 So, uh, uh, what is your diagnosis from this disease? This disease is, is on the screen. What is your di what was your diagnosis? Um, ventricular ectopic with lateral ischemia. Ventricular ventricular ectopic with lateral ischemia. 
sir? Okay. You ask Why do you think it's later, that is lateral ischemia? Um, uh, um, B5A, uh, B5A, uh, ST depression. Okay, sure. So that is ST depression in before B5, B6. Um, as and, well as. And anybody else, anything else? Anybody else answered? Anything? So, so global ST depression, almost global ST depression. Uh, sir, many people answered left. Uh, ST depression in AVR and also BR. Uh, Dhriti Dash, uh, Dhriti Dash, you please. What is your comment about the AVR, lead AVR? Do you see anything abnormality in lead AVR, Dhriti Dash? Uh, uh, ST elevation. ST elevation. So what is the cause of the ST elevation? Can you comment from your lecture today? Um, left main is AVR, ST elevation. Um, depression. Excellent, sir. Bangladesh. All right. What's up, Sir, this is actually very important and nice. Yes, sir. The patient is 84, 83 years old, male person, showing uh, the sinus tachycardia as well as the PVC. And there is also ST depression 1 AVL. Also, in the uh, four, five, six, in four, five, six, that means five already. And there's also ST depression in slightly in lead three and AVF, ST elevation in AVR and B1, B1. slightly. All these suggest in the clinical context suggested this patient has uh, left pain oh. disease. Okay, so let's look at the angiogram. Uh, Sir, I am sir. sinus tachycardia with PVC with evidence of ischemia. Yes. What is evidence of ischemia? Is it the What underlying cause may be, then I should consider for. And suggestive of left main disease. You have to put it in writing. You have to call the consultant. And at once, one data as because there is a television in ABR. And then we should go for the B1. If more than greater than one, then we should consider left pain. If it is more than B1 is greater than ABR, then we should consider the proximal LD. Yeah. Otherwise, widespread triple vessel disease may be another consideration to for this yeah. scenario. Let so, classical teaching jeta amake bolta hobe je age condition gulu the amake ABR important take. Important to is predictive, positive predictive value, negative predictive value very important. Ekhane jodi ABR jodi estimation na thakto. Unlikely to have a or left pin coronary disease. Jai to ekhane achhe tar pane ami confirm bolle filter bhatti sir. Amaka unno other evidence dekhta hobe. Other possible is gulu ka exclude korte hobe. First step thala aage LED involvement kina triple vessel disease kina left pin disease kina shere ka mai exclude korte hobe. Aso. Na shuno. Pori khat table hole. To mane to mane what is your expectation from the student side? The what? Amar actually theke amar findings ta hobe je sinus tachycardia PVC what what is the evidence of ischemia. More pointing, maybe it is due to left vein disease or proximal LED disease or diffuse triple vessel disease. It I mean, I mean, Left vein disease involvement as a proximal LED involvement as a or triple vessel disease involvement as a because widespread ST depression with ABR among B1 is to ST elevation evidence as Tile Amaka we left vein disease take a shaker at this court the it is a medical emergency. Ami Taki Ashleki or Oneki Korbiki, a television decay, thrombolysis the edible. As kept a chile and a question colo, ABR is the estillation taka, thrombolysis Korbikina. That depends upon the situation. If feasible, you must go for PCI. If not feasible, you have to do something better, you can go for thrombolysis. Sir, that you should take care, you should take care of the clinical context, always. It's a case by case. In this scenario, patient came to uh, definitely come to you with severe chest pain or severe unstable engine and may present. But single lead ST elevation in AVR, we cannot go for decision for thrombolytics. Rather, we can go for early primary PCI strategy, we can go or early invasive strategy, we can go if it is supported by ECG evidence as, as you have. If yeah. you don't have the uh, troponin, then you consider early invasive strategy in the form of reverse 
Then if you find the left vein disease, critical left vein disease, if it is possible to treat into to five minutes, then you go for that. If it is not, then you can consider for reverse solution in the form of CABC. I okay. think in this way, we can approach this patient for this patient. मैं <laughs> 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 যদি এভিয়ার চেয়ে ভি1 এর যদি এস্টিমেশন যদি বেশি থাকে তাহলে ইট ইজ মোর ফেভারেবল ফর হচ্ছে লেফট পেন ডিজিজ যদি এভিয়ার চেয়ে ভি1 এ যদি বেশি থাকে তাহলে মোর ফেভারেবল ফর হচ্ছে অস্টিয়াল এলএডি বা প্রক্সিমাল এলএডি বিফোর ফার্স্ট সেপটাল আর যদি ওয়াইড স্প্রেড এস্টি ডিপ্রেশন থাকে যদি 1 এভিএল বি4 বি5 বি6 অথবা গ্লোবাল এস্টি ডিপ্রেশন মোর দ্যান 12 মিমি হয় তাহলে আমাকে চিন্তা করতে হবে মেবি ট্রিপল ভেসেল ডিজিজ বাট আই এম নট শিওর it may gives you clue but it is angiography can give you a right answer de what is your expectation and what is your findings exactly. disease the first thing is this patient needs early cath lab cath lab intervention is if possible if possible okay. sir so no friend let's move on so this is this is the picture yes just the thing sir but one of our participant dr virat tamal sena he is repeatedly yes. answering in the chat box that sir From our uh, Wadud Bhai's lecture, there there is ST elevation both in V1 and AVR. So he wants to call it that is the ST that is the late main disease that is the ST elevation both yeah. in V1 and AVR. Global ST depression, V1 ST elevation, AVR ST elevation, and AV ST elevation in AVR and uh, more than the V1. So if we tell it that the diagnosis that the, it is the late suggestive of the late main disease, is there any wrong? No, no, no. He's very right. No wrong. Right. No wrong. No wrong. Exactly. No wrong. We need more, uh, uh, much more information from this. Correlate with the uh, uh, coronary angiogram. It is a thorough answer, I guess. I mean, I have to watch it. So, I think I'm going to wrap up this. I, I, I will echo the Professor Azam's description that when we are describing ECG, we are describing ECG. Right. And then so, the so finally we. we should describe the ecg as professor azam say that sinus tachycardia there is st depression in such and such lead there is st elevation and then put a final conclusion that suspect now if you see this ecg in the ecg room what we will do because we sit in the ecg room or in our office and we are reading ecg as they are being done i will make sure that i call the emergency room and find out what's happening with that patient any acute ecg change when we read it we immediately make phone call that where is this patient because in the emergency room they may have missed this ecg they may miss this ecg because this ecg is not a terrible ecg if you look at without chest pain so please remember that that please don't ignore so this is left main what do you think of the rca what do then azam it depends is it probably not probably non dominant Probably. Okay. Sir, probably right. non-dominant and it is subtotal occlusion also there. Evidence is there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You sometimes wonder if you look at this kind of angiogram how these patients are surviving. Yes, I mean, definitely. It's amazing that uh, this is <laughs> eighty-three year old person. Amar Abbar Professor Chilon, Samsudin Shah Medicine. So, how can medical? Because when you look at this, they say that they are very active. The Baba. चैम्बारे भर्ती दिए मैं मेडिकल ट्रिटमेंट दे क्या उन्न फ्यू डेज 
ইভেন ইন উইকস এর মধ্যে কিন্তু پیشنটা এমআই ডেভেলপ করে এই জন্য এবং কোন پیشنটাকে আমাকে আরজিন ইন্টারভেনশনে যেতে হবে আর কোনটাকে আমরা পরে যাব এটা কিন্তু একটা ওই যে ইসিজি সব মানে সামটাইমস গিভস এ ভেরি ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ক্লু যে আসলে আমরা সাবসিকুয়েন্ট স্টেপটা আমাদের কি হওয়া উচিত আমি স্যার কে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ দেই আমি ভাবছিলাম যে হয়তো ইস্যুটা আসাতে আমি মনে পড়ছে স্যার কে রুগিটাতে ভর্তি দিলাম লিখে তো দিয়ে যে আজকে মিলে গেল আর কি স্যার थैंक यू वेरी मच স্যার I think this will be the last ECG. This one, sixty-nine-year-old male with chest pain. Post in, sir. Again. Now we just have to show me the data, sir. Participant. Yes. No, no. Participant answer, Gorok. Um, uh, discuss the ECG, and then if if you think. it is acute um, ischemic event which vessel is involved it is very important sir acha ribu hello ribu ji <laughs> can you call doctor atar bhai atar bhai atar bhai ek minute kake dakar ki koi na we try let's repeat up okay yeah let's do this ecg and we will close it everybody is missing something sir onek onek bhalo likhteche koi e tushar tumi kothay ektu bolo amader ektu bolo ha na tushar onek bhalo likhche tushar nai let pain disease with low atrial rhythm low atrial good there is also porajhe shobi mona mode bhitore ache sir sir kono kichu bad rakhe nai hm odoccha kono kichu bad rakhe nai रिदम V5, V6, V4, P wave is negative. So, and two, three AVF P waves. I think we can call it left atrial rhythm. But if somebody yeah, tells me this is low atrial rhythm, I'm happy with that. But to be more specific, I think this is a left atrial rhythm. And of course, everybody has described that there is ST depression in V4, V5, V6, um, lead two AVF, and maybe in lead three. And there is ST elevation in lead um, AVR. and a small st elevation so in this case st elevation is more in avr than v1 so any comment yes. on that what do left pin left pin okay. is much more important okay so let shall we look at the angiogram angiogram yes sir so this is the right uh, coronary artery <laughs> huge big right coronary artery this yeah. was interesting because if you look at this one it's not left but it's left main equivalent yeah proximal lcf proximal led led so this is the uh, what it was i think we should we should stop it here sir tobe sir ami just ekta comment kori sir ei khetre ji ami ei khane dekhchi na but erokom mane amader ekta paper hocchilo ebong ami porchi sir jate short latement thake latement when short then yes. this kind of the ecg avr mane that may mimic the uh, such type of st sensation in avr mane those who has got the short, short latement মানে আরসি তে লেশার বাট প্লাস লেটমেন ইজ শর্ট ওকে গুড অল রাইট थैंक यू वेरी मच একটা আমি জিনিস বলতে যাচ্ছি স্যার যে হাইপার অ্যাকুট যেমন রিসেন্ট এমআই হাইপার অ্যাকুট এমআই টল টল টি পিক টি ওয়েব দেখে হাইপার অ্যাকুট এমআই এটা কি আমরা বলতে পারবো বা ইয়েতে স্টুডেন্টদের কাছ থেকে এটা কি আমরা ই করতে পারবো না কি ইফ ইউ গিভ দা ক্লিনিক্যাল সিনারিও দে শুড ডায়াগনোস ইট প্রপারলি বাট উই हैव टू प्रोवाइड দা ক্লিনিক্যাল সিনারিও लम्बा <laughs> tricky ecg showed by the uh, rupik ahmed sir so thank you again uh, professor wadur bhai you have wrapped a very big uh, 
uh, chapter in a single uh, session. That's just the reason the, your lecture was long. But it, you covered all the things. We have learned a lot of things from your ECD. And another announcement for our participants that in our coming two uh, days, that is the two Saturdays, coming Saturday and next Saturday, our speaker will be Rofi Ahmed sir. That is the next speaker, our two sessions. That is, a, uh, sir, Saturday next and uh, two consecutive Saturdays. You have got two lectures, sir. Mechanism of Paridvia and the atrial as well. <laughs> Rupi Kame, sir. So yeah. this is a big announcement of our participants. That is the Rupi Kame, sir. Asa, we actually, uh, Mahabur Ramon Babu, you are still here? Sir, sir. Sorry, sorry, Mahabur Babu. Actually, we missed you. I I I finally I request to Babu to comment some uh, Professor Wadud lectures. Babu. Sir Wadud sir is always a good uh, man and good. Uh, its delivery is always very very nice and it's very very benefited to our uh, fellows. And your team is very rich, sir. You, Prof. Uh, Messer and Wadud sir. It's a very a rich platform so every student must be benefited from this platform and you are doing well sir you are as an organizer not only Wadud sir also Rafik sir and you all are good and you are doing good sir and best of luck sir you will go and continue this session sir. actually thank you sir. Uh, there was another yeah. segment of today's but we will actually not uh, show it that is uh, because of the long session today and finally we are very very uh. grateful to our professor abdullah shafi mozumdar sir as because he's still with us for a long time and professor shufi around madam i don't know uh, uh, what has time in actually we are very much grateful to madam as because you are whole session with us and participate in our discussion and also Professor Mohsin Hoshen, Mahmoud Allah Feroz, and Khaled Khanis Fatima. Fatima. Actually, they are Khanis Fatima. Professor yes. Khanis Fatima. Khanis, yeah. Professor Khanis Fatima. Actually, uh, we did not uh, to comment from her. And Dr. Uh, Gobindo Pal. Everybody was very much energetic and very much interested to come and participate in this session. And you will expect that in our next session, Dr. Rupi Khamed Sar session, sir, Saturday and uh, next Saturday. Actually, we expect everybody to this session. And there are Timing, another... Timing, 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 Timing? Timing. Shana. 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 There was another, that is ECG of the week. I will not show, show it today, but I like to congratulate Dr. Mosaddikul Alam, who rightly answered to this question, that is ECG of the week. Dr. Mosaddikul Alam, I, I, I think you are in the screen, and congratulations to Dr. Mosaddikul Alam for your answer to the, that is the ECG of the week that was uh, actually displayed in the uh, ECG Facebook of the ECG study group's Facebook. So, I will not discuss that. Is... Care, no, care okay. medicine, yes. And Dr. Kanis Fatima, actually, we are very much sorry that we did not actually uh, call you to for active participation, but we are very much delighted and grateful for your participation. And I think you will uh, actually continue your uh, participation and you will actually encourage your students to participate in this session. And I think uh, you will be very much uh, efficient person to comment. Do you want to comment something from your teacher, that is Professor Wadud Lekhsar? Dr. Kanis Fatima. Are you here, Dr. Kanis Fatima? Unmute Kottave. Dr. Kanis Fatima, unmute, please. Kanis, are you there? And I think she has left. So, what I, I think she is not. What about you? Your concluding remarks. Well, I am really grateful. I don't want to say anything else. We have tolerated P for a long, long period. And that's good enough for me. And the ICT is, uh, Rafiq sir has shown is so parted into the lecture. It's so useful for understanding the, what is there and what we should do, how we should approach. And sir is teaching two things, both the ICT and what a teacher should do. One comment of his is very important. We should put something in the exam what he have taught them and is really important for saving a life. Only academic thing of critical importance, only academically, is not that important to make a cardiology consultant. We should be paying attention to their fact. And teachers like Professor Madhudar sir, Professor Sufiya Rahman, Rafiq sir, all the teachers, they have taught us and we should be 
teaching our juniors like that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Vaccine Pro. Assalamu alaikum. Good night. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Ribu. Sir, I'm going to do a good day, sir. Ribu, thank you. Thank you so much. Ruben, bye. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. आपने ब्रेकफास्ट पर तो है नहीं। है ना यार। बाहर तो बंदे लंच खाई तो हो बे। अच्छा अच्छा। अच्छा मैडम किस तरह बोल सिलें? आमिर बोल सिलें जब वो तो फ्रॉम दी बिगिनिंग टिल द एंड एक ही स्पीडे एक ही ये ते एक ही चंद बोले कि जैसे देर इज नो रश देर नो इट वाज वेरी गुड फॉर दी जूनियर्स नो no tiredness, no rushing, no every, you know, it was excellent. I, I enjoyed it. Thank Ji, you. Ji, madam, Wadu sir has kept double century for a film. Thank you, madam. Wadu, bhai, it's not easy. Sir, sir. I'm going to comment on the Wadu sir's lecture. Madam, I'm going to comment on the Wadu sir's lecture. I'm going to comment on the Wadu sir's lecture. I appreciate his personalized approach. Sir, sir. I'm going to comment on the Wadu sir's lecture. I'm going to comment on the Wadu sir's lecture. I appreciate that there the personal approach. This is the one of the qualities of a good teacher that he should present it in in his own way, in the from his own experience he should present it. So thank you, Adul. Isn't it what you said, sir? Uh, you say that I mean, uh, teacher, not only I am a master. What is a master? What is possible? But his his approach is always like a master. Actually, we congratulate him, sir. He is really a master. Thank you, thank you, sir. अच्छा फाइनली फाइनली से रीव हुए बंग जहाँ की शुभ हो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर फ्रॉम आवर साइट फॉर शुभ हो आमादे आमादे थैंक्स तो तुम्हारे माने जरा अच्छे तादर के पहुँचा दिवार की थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कंटिन्यू सपोर्ट थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सर तेरे बिदाई नहीं लम सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम सामने कुछ सब एक साथ